Rat? The oh French yeah, Avenger. that's right. We are back <laughs> at chef. it. We get to watch Cooker bat again, and once again, cast his matches. That's that yep, is yep. correct. Yeah. We saw some Spectre Tenebra play actually yesterday. A lot of contested picks against her, which I think really works in his favor because obviously he's not only a Spectre Tenebra enjoyer, he's not only a Spectre Tenebra specialist, but he really takes one of the most meta units that only gets more value the more our f the first picks get banned, the AoEs get banned further and further into the tournament. So unless somebody pre-bans Spectre Tenebra, which we were, you know, Wait, 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 hold on. Before we keep talking about it, because yeah. I have a lot of things to say about Spectre Tenebria drafts. You yeah. know me. Okay, uh, okay, okay, shall yeah. we do the intro for the tournament? That's oh, right. I think not? we should. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put in a new headset Hello, because morning. mine's getting it ready to die. It is a beautiful Sunday. <laughs> it is a beautiful Sunday. Welcome to the App Gallery EU tournament, sponsored by a special collaboration between Epic 7 and Huawei. Huawei is an app gallery platform offering discounts through coupons, special offers, allowing you to access 15 to 25% or even more off in your in-app purchases for Epic 7, as well as other games that you might play. So make sure you check out the QR code on screen right now or click that pinned link so you too can enjoy any game, not just limited to Epic 7 with discounts available only through Huawei. Wow, I am so much better at this now that I'm not on my own channel. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I don't know right. what is wrong with me. I'm a business person, but when I'm on my own channel, I do the, I do the most bland ad reads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm on other people, I'm like, yo, I gotta do, do, do right by Tristan. I gotta make this sound good. Hey, and I tell you, it, it's uh, it's not just an ad read. This stuff is legit. This is something I use every single time that I make a purchase in Epic 7. I've been using it for over a year now. It has saved me hundreds of dollars cumulatively. I get anywhere from sometimes as little as 10%. One time I got about 45% off a $100 pack. It was really nice dropping that $100 pack and seeing only $61 hitting my credit card. So definitely check them out i'll put a link in the discord for you guys to click so that you guys can uh check out the special offer yourself and if you um there we go somebody could pin that because for some reason obs will not let me pin my I own stuff but yeah if you uh if you have trouble with that you can check out their discord you can dm me directly and we'll get you set up and taken care of tristan now yep. now i have a question for you yeah you're faster than me right What's your fastest opening unit? Uh, right now is yeah. uh, 308 because I spread it around to have three well, or four is, like, different 300 speeds. But unit on, if, like, a if I, or a para. my fastest unit that's not a ran or a para? No, 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 if you put your gear on the ran. Or oh, a like if I, if I if I put my fastest fastest yeah, max gear. Max speed, max speed. Yeah, uh, what's your max th speed? Hit the brakes. 327. And and, and 327. What? Okay, I knew you were fast. I knew you were this. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to do a bit for you. And you you hit the, the 327 Rand gear while farming with the leaves you bought from the Huawei App Gallery App Store, right? I, I'm, I'm begrudgingly <laughs> finishing this bit. So if you want to be 327 fast like Tristan or die try, make sure you download the Huawei App Gallery and you make your purchases on there with the discount. Otherwise, oh boy, I don't know how much more you're going to have to spend to be 327 like Tristan. Man, zoom, zoom. I'm 318, bro. <laughs> I thought I was fast out here, man. I think, I think I'm I think I'm three eleven at best. Even wait, you're closer to me than I am to Tristan? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I quit, I quit. I, I'm sorry for trying this, but I'm sorry. What's cool? What's cool? You gotta be well, fast outlap the wyvern, man. PvE gaming for the win. Gong Chi, Gong Chi. Mm-hmm. Good job, Tristan. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're here or whatever reason you're here, I just want to thank you. Obviously, you have lots of options in the E7 category. You've got some other popular. You've got some other popular people. You've got VTubers. You've even got AI artists running their channel 24/7. But you chose to be here, and I can't help but be thankful for that. So thank you all very much. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, anyway, so, you know, we were talking about the Spectre Tenebria drafts, and, uh, you know, yesterday we saw a lot of aggressive action. We got Rikazo in one of the brackets, and then on the other side, there was XLR. Both players, whenever you're playing aggressive, right, you hate to see counterattacks. And True. there's no better counterattack characters in the game right now than the ML Landy, than the ML Yufin, and Bellion. <laughs> and those units were non-existent in yesterday's matches. However, 
you know, with a slow player like Chi, I'm willing to wager that we might see something, um, we might see these units crop up. And when these units do, I wonder if it makes it any more challenging for Cougar Bad to pull out that Spectre to Gabriel, because we know she's been one of the strongest units in the game for a long, 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 long time. And um, there's a lot of ways to check her now. But like you said, he's always found a way. He's always protected the Steny. And I'm sure today will be no different. Now, I've got a couple questions I want to ask you. I just, it's just from my perspective, Val, guys, just a little bit of enlightenment here. Why not just ban the Steny? Why not just pre-ban it? Oh, just straight up. Do that. Okay. People absolutely do that. It's just um, sometimes people think, I got the Landy, I got I got the LRK, I got the Last Rider Crow. I'm good. And a lot of times people realize it's not enough, especially not versus a Warhorn Lifesteal Spectre Tenebria. Okay, got it. So it's it's the tech, it's the it's it's built to okay. Understood. Understood. Alright, okay. Fair enough. Well, we ready to get into these matches and see another awesome set play out for us, just like yesterday. Mm-hmm. Alright, well, whenever these guys are ready, I'm sure we'll head right into it. And I am ready to see some Spectre Tenebria. Ready, roaring, and already ready to go. I can't say ready one more time or the police will come for me. But the matches shall begin. They shall start on the way. The second half of the bracket is here, ladies and gentlemen. Top eight finishing and rounding out Let's right before go. your eyes. Let's go, yeah. And once again, we are at the cross where we are going to have to see what pre-bands come out. And ooh, very interestingly, Krugerbat decides to go with the DDR, the Death Dealer Ray prevent next to the Lua. Knockwell's out as well, oh, followed so... by the Zeo. So Conqueror Lilius actually becomes the best opener in the game because she's the only one that's left. And Leia, who is usually an extremely high priority pick, actually falls down the the, the, the flow chart a little bit there. Still absolutely could be picked up into the later parts of this match. Magic Chi. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about his playstyle that you were going into earlier, Val? Right, best. and, uh, you know, I, I made a comment earlier about, you know, he, Magic has a, this very slow and methodical playstyle. It's almost like, slow? I didn't know Chi was slow. I thought, no, he, he is fast, but he chooses to play slow and play in a very respectful, methodical Three way. And look at that. We know he's a guy with a 330 pay rate, but he decides to opt into the airwall matchup instead, as well as the Navy Captain Landy. Um, Arrowell is one of the best tanks to be taking with her because whenever you have Navy Captain Landy on board, you're expecting to see a Lone Crescent Bologna who can just eat a single target stun, a click and point stun from that Arrowell. Roana being picked up as, oh my god, Kukurbat really came out to say, you're not playing the game today and neither am I, holy. I see so much of just exciting energy right Should here in I front of me. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it is quite literally 3 p.m. And unfortunately, I just woke sight. up for this, so I'm unable to go back to sleep. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna give it 110% for the absolute support tank tank engine. <laughs> that is she is incredible. wasting no time. That's, that's the advantage of picking your DPS units later into the draft. And he locks in the Huayo as well as the Gala Lilius. We are going full aggression. And there it is, the Lone Crescent Bologna uh, being picked up there for Cougar Bat. Oh boy, I mean, Cougar Bat looks like he is trying not to mess around at all, absolutely whatsoever. Locking in the most deadly picks and oh, banned out Magic's uh, Conqueror Lilius as well with Rowana being traded out. You would have thought seeing all these, uh, all this protection for our stalwart princess towards the end of the draft, that a Spectre Tenebra might have reared her ugly head, but no, he opts into the uh, Crescent Bologna as well. A very stalwart pick, maybe even a bit inspired by the performance he saw at last year's um, cup tournament that he was a part of as well. And, we Ooh, and here's it. a surprise, Leia going first, taking the turn above the Gala Lilius. That's not something you see every day. Normally in scenarios like this, Gala Lilius gets picked up because she's fast. And the Leia here, stealing Everybody the first now. turn, going to pull a dual Leave attack, and uh, triggering the Elbrus first turn. <laughs> Already getting value out of that ban, Roana would have already yeah, pushed up most of the enemy team that could have especially been dangerous to Lulukar there. 
um, I mean, especially when Those you have that dreams. Lone Crescent Bologna on board, you do not want a salvo Usually and good counter, no salvo, end. and oof, goes into the Crimson Arm and pushes a little bit, and now the Ocean Breeze Luka has orders. a chance to strip all the buffs and land a whole bunch of debilitating debuffs on the side of G. Yes, I see you're a big fra fan of my favorite phrase. Those debilitating debuffs, the blind, the silence, going to be taking its shot. Only the silence applied hey, you, to the C. Lilius. Not too to much of a big, them. I mean, not the C. Lilius. God, <laughs> the Midnight Gala Lilius. As we get the kick down here as well, finishing oh. off the Armin with these two gigantic high target damage signals. AOEs. I mean, single there target. There is a single target stun coming out for the Lone Crescent Bologna. Your landing needs some room to breathe, and she needs it now. Bologna gets stunned out. However, passes the stun, so it won't be the biggest damage to that side. Counter attack goes through, so you get the bat back here. Not a whole lot of damage with the air wall, mitigating the damage with that S4 buff. Use more different words. Words are hard. Words are hard, but I'll tell you what is not Do hard not to see that. how little damage the Bologna took just there. The blind certainly Jeez, coming Chris, into effect with me. the with these units coming in. Another counter attack. Three procs of ruler of the seas. You have to remember, Landy is a very Let's fair and balanced character who only gets stronger every single time she lets one of those S1s rip oh, roar and tear through the team. And speaking of tearing through, we finally got the S3 from our Bologna. Let's see this fair lady's damage. <laughs> Not too much of a scratch at all, I'd say. And another counterattack leading up to the ship already. Yeah, the ship's gonna come crashing through. Self attack up. This is an AOE attack coming in. Defense penetration. The whole shebang takes out the Bologna right here. And Cougar Bass already down two units. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything I love, it's being heavily punished for single target attacks. That's right, it doesn't matter if you brought AOE or not, the ship is still sailing south and it's still sailing true, and it came through from landing. When you're playing that lone crescent balloon, that's the thing you want to see the least. You do not want to see the counter without the salvo propping. The salvo is what activates the Malone. The salvo is what ramps her, and the salvo is what lets her outpace the Navy Captain Landing. And now, Kruger Bass being put in a position where he really needs to keep this Leia alive if he wants to have a chance to take this game one home and the Leia needs to close out three DPS units. That oh, is a finally, I was about to say, this is the kind of spread of defaults we wanted far earlier into the match. Stacked up with three silences, blinds all across the board, burning for the extra damage as well, but it instead ends up healing. And we're going to have to circle back to these high target AoEs, but I don't know if we survive. Ice Cream is going to keep the Leia alive a little bit longer. Who, what target do you choose here? You need to take out the Galilius. I mean, she's just a little bit too strong versus your units left. Leia swings the base into the Hua Young first, actually. Ooh, and we don't kill here, even with no escort buff. Dang. We Unable to kill the Landy counter attack, she salvos, and that's enough bad luck for Cougar Bat's day. Magic Chi takes away with the first win of the set. Now. As we prepare, let's uh, take a couple seconds. We got to look at this. Um, something um, something of a bit of a difficulty. Tristan, what's the rule here? Do you want to do you want to back out or try something? Or are we just going to continue on with the set? Um, let's try one more time. I think I might have gotten it taken care of. I think it might have been an issue with the virtual camera. Sue, I can't check DMs. It'll break the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Um... But it seems to be moving a little bit smoother now that I disabled the virtual camera. So we'll try one more fight. If it's still laggy, then after this match, we'll go ahead and yeah, restart I, I LD would, player. But I think we're fine. I would also, if you have anything else on the side that... No, everything else is... Uh, everything's closed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dang, it's extremely high-end computer. So yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards it was either LD or Discord. But we should be fine. Okay. She does take that first game home. And I mean, that was a game where one of those times where Navy Captain Landy, I think, looked extremely good versus Lone Crescent Bologna. Now that is, I would say, a 80-20 favor towards Lone Crescent Bologna. And the counters just did not proc those salvos, which was would would have have been instrumental in snowballing that that a uh, comeback for Cougar Bat. You guys ready yeah, for the... Earth game is buried and put away. Um, really need to see if Cougar Bat finds one of those adaptations where he can come back into the game. Because as of right now, Chi looks like he has an overwhelming lead on the game. 
Well, I wouldn't be too worried in, in all terms for Kukabat. We still haven't seen the unleashing of the potential disastrous weapon that he has on his side. And somebody who's devoted that much time, creativity, and skill into getting one unit to work more than likely has a couple backup plans, as you hinted at earlier. I think we're far. I think we're far out of a situation where Kukabat has no more cards left in the deck to play. I'd say this hand's just getting fired up and it's just getting started. I have to see. Yeah, the moment these guys are ready to send it to game two, I mean, oh boy. Really need to see how Cougar Bad adapts around Chi's strategy because you need to be doing a lot to overcome the amount of gear score that's just packed into your units. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as we head into the next match, I'm looking forward to those adaptations that you were talking about earlier. Interesting bands being put out with the Rowana. Uh, that certainly does shake things up a little bit. And I'm hoping and happy to see players adapt to that as well. Buffs up the lie a little bit. She does get those guaranteed dual attacks on her S1. Um, so it's one unit to start out with. And it's always such a strong front to open with, you know? And that's the thing. I think even though Kukerbat didn't look too good last game, he did take out the Conqueror and Lilius, and suddenly we're in a spot where there are no neutral strong speed openers uh, in a position that can just, you know, last game it set Chi in a position where he could play aggressive, he could play slow, and now I think he, with this bunny dominial, he's going to have a bit more of a problem. Uh, getting up to that speed, speeding his draft up. And I'm surprised nobody picked up a Navy Captain Landy early with Rowan and Band Al uh, in this set of pre bands. You name it. Ozak here, thank you for the raid so much. And everybody joining us in, in the middle of this situation right here, right now. We're starting off our top eight of the set, bottom of that top eight right now, with this match between Magic Chi and Kukrabat. Magic Chi being one up in the set, best of five as well. The action's heating up with a common response we see coming out out of the rat as you were talking about earlier we're seeing the ocean breeze luca come into play once more again um, i'm even hoping at least a little bit for a better spread we saw the second time landing a lot of those key debuffs when the match had already more than tilted in magic she's favor perhaps this time the roll of the dice will be a little bit more favorable or maybe magic she has something up his hand to stop that onslaughting wave of debilitating debuffs from crashing and bashing through the entire Why team and just... someone like last rider crowd might just be the answer. Backed up by the fateful Navy Captain Landy again, setting this sail over My to sure seas. I mean, Lone Crescent Bologna needs to come out again. Last match, Cougar Bat had the single DPS setup spread with the Leia, and that was heavily punished by Chi. Uh, we'll need to see if he goes for something similar this time, because yes, it <laughs> might. Oh, wow! He is not letting up. We are just going full. Triple support, one tank, one DPS. That is not the setup you want to see. This is known as the I want to end legend draft. Is, uh... <laughs> I want. <it. laughs> oh man, well, how, 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 how do I, how do you, you know, how do you justify this? It just, I want to end legend and I want it not now. I want it an hour from now. That's, that's what I want it. Yeah, I mean. It's it, my it's... frame and I need it now. <laughs> It's, it's not now, I'll tell you what, with all the uh, non-instant gratification this draft is going to get you, this is one of those drafts that whenever you see on the ladder, you know you're in for a long game, and you know you are in for a slow game. Aiden banned out to be, basically to remove the only protection afforded to this lone Crescent Bologna, but mitigation removed as well for Cougar Bat's side. That barrier from the arrow wall just mitigates so much injury and damage from the urban shadow shoe and we would like to see her pop off this game that is what she is telling me with his post band seems like a list of key priority targets are already lined up on the board as we head in a slack will do oh, bunny Moon dominial up. takes the first turn here over um over the leia and the luluka but you do not want to press her uh, s3 here if you activate the ultimate you actually push up the luluka so we, we, we're going to play nice and slow and let viblis take play the game s3 comes out and uh, this is going to determine the flow of the game blinds the landy with the attack down that is the tool the power of a Biblis, you really want to use her to slow down the opponent's Navy Captain Landy. Barrier does come up, and look at that. 
That is why we want the barrier. Mitigate that damage, mitigate the chip damage, and use it to block away the injuries and keep our Leia healthy so she can act as our secondary source of damage. Uh, the action is clear on pushing up the Lulica and getting those buffs I'll up into a situation idea. where you we can protect ourselves. Speaking of those buffs, Last Rider Crow coming through with the bike, getting into the action, setting the pace with a lot of this damage, but receiving the response as well. Decreases on the turns, pushing up, pushing up the Lone Crescent Bologna. Now we got the two turn immunity here, which is super important for warding off um, the Biblis debuffs for as long as we can. However, Truck Luca does get a duel here, so we are going to be stripping a lot of the immunity. All oh, and all of them get picked up, and that silence is just going to be super. That's deadly. such a weird. That's such a weird situation as well, too, isn't it? Because it's a little bit. It's playing into both teams a lot, right? You want the buff stri stripped as soon as they came up, right? So immunity goes up from. Crap. He goes down from Crow, but also at the same time, it's charging him up for another bike. And that really reveals those two core conditions that Magic Chi is relying on. The rat is going to be focused down. She's not going to survive for too long. But the boat does massive damage, as we saw earlier when it comes through. And a sustained flurry of those bikes ramping up with damage each time might do him in as well. He hasn't exactly. used the S3. Both of these guys line up perfect kill priorities, and Urban Shadow Shoe is going down here. And that's how you know you're watching two extremely. Oh, not just yet! Not just play. yet! She's surviving with just enough HP to get one more attack off into the Lia, making sure to get as much injury damage, lower her overall damage damage on her S3. Let's when it does come out, a parting kiss to the rest of the team before she embraces death with this counterattack right here. He takes out the shoe, and both of these players just have such good target selections. Last match, it was take out each other's mitigation first, and this match is just a star hammering towards the other player's highest priority win condition. And oh god, Landy goes for the counterattack here, but you don't want to see it. Sprinkler comes through from the Biblis, and you... Oh no! All three no units are defense! Oh, <laughs> GG comes it's down from Chi! Flower. Oh boy, Cougar Bat takes game two. <sighs> I mean that that was certainly interesting to see. Um we'll we'll take a look at these difficulties right now. Um uh just, yeah, just we're, we're, we're going to need to uh, adjust some things. Uh, Tristan, we're getting a restart. <sighs> I am not sure what happens if being the owner of the room, if I restart LD player in the middle of a round. Uh, yeah. I think if we were doing that, you know who the second spot in the room is? You know, Do you know if it's me? I, if it's me, you, you probably could do it. I think it might be Evan Dariel. I'm not sure. Uh, all right, Evan, go leave the room first, and then Tristan also leave the room, because I'm pretty sure I'm the third person in the room. Can't leave the room. I just literally have to restart. I guess I can yeah, leave. Just go for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. If I'm if I'm modding the room, um, should be fine. I'll I'll handle modding this room. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, Evan Dariel says Cooker Bats after. You, you, why don't you just stay there, Evan? Are you still there? Yeah. Then you, then you just stay. You just fill in for. Are you still in there, Evan? Wait, I thought I was in the room like third. I, I think Cookerbat like joined almost as soon as I set it up. Okay, stay stay there, Evan. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the room, restart the emulator. Yeah, let, let's give it a restart. Ongoing battle will immediately end if I leave the room now. Uh Tristan, because uh it's gonna be weird if you change Discord screens. Can you take a usually your your phone and take a photo of, of how many uh Divine like, Shadow seven seventy seven set? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me vet your scenes real quick to make sure, like, we're as efficient as we can. Just just text it to me. Yeah, I already, I already put in photos of the group chat of the uh, bands up to this point in the match status. Let me, um... Let me try one more thing. It might jank the cameras up a little bit, but... Let's stop this. If we, if we gotta do this camera list, I don't yeah. think that's... I'll, I'll just I'll just have to move the cameras. I'll just have to move the cameras around while we fight. Let me see. Too many scenes. All right. Well, while we take a little bit of time aside to talk about that, 
I do love these matches, I gotta tell you, Falk. The, the constant back and forth uh, between this nature. But, you know, I, I've talked about it a bunch before we got into it, so I do have to highlight it here. Why go from the man, the myth, the legend, the, the chef, best known for the Spectre Teamer, and why start pulling out the LCB here today? Um, so, you know, if we, we could go into the really in-depth in the reason, but you, everything eventually boils down to one thing, and that's just because I guess he wants to end Legend. It's that, just that simple. At the end of the day, um, I think a lot of people play the game to win, and if you want to win, that's one of the easiest ways you can do it. You pick the Leia, um, you have a all-in-one unit, right? And in a draft game like RTA, uh, if you could, it, it, like, imagine, think back to the game yesterday, right? We played a match where, oh, I forget who, but I, I think it was, I, I think it was Biru, where he ended up with a draft where it's a tank, two supports, one, uh, a tank, one DPS, one true support, Leia and Death Dealer Ray, right? These guys are one support, but also a DPS in one. So what that does for them is it's essentially you're, you have six units okay. in the draft while your opponent has five. You know, you just get a unit and a half in one because they can do yeah, so many yeah, things you, for you. You were talking about this idea earlier where it's just like, you know, as we get more characters, we obviously know that, you know, Power creep is an essential factor of every single game. We're getting more and more units that are crossing the bridges between just being a DPS and a support, or just being a DPS to being a DPS and a support, to being you know a bruiser and a support. Hell, you uh, Abyssal Euphine just ruins the game for me half the time by her presence being there alone and saying, "Uh, -uh, -uh no yeah. combat readiness pushes up." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you just count, you know, however many things is in a unit's kit, right? Um, I think by the time Navy Captain Landy came out and subsequently Abyssal Yuffie, like you said, um, I do believe those units just have like one more thing in their kit or even like 1.5, two more things in their kit compared to all other units in the game. And I think in the case of Leia, it's just the first time we have a support that has this many things going for her. Uh, Tristan, if this doesn't work, the last solution that seems to be in the background uh, it seems to be Sue saying something about restarting in 720p because of how much Epic 7 hates being in 1080-60 FPS. That's just that. I don't know if I even voiced all that correctly, but that that's yeah. that. But no, I I hear I hear you, Valk. Um, I was going to say something else, but then I completely lost my train of thought. But no, I, I feel like there's an interesting thing to be said about how much your like how much your unit is really bringing to the table like yes there is like this is the right unit for the job and sometimes this is the right unit to counter what my opponent has brought up but sometimes i really feel like especially in the early first three picks of the draft it really comes down to hi i picked this unit that does eight things right that's why Rand's. that's why we've seen periods where ran is such uh, was such a crazy character right because he literally has a kit that is so stuffed people can't remember right people uh, uh, can't uh, remember uh, everything he does i think no i think ran oh, yeah. still came out during a period where characters have the same amount of things in in their kit mm -hmm. it, it's just the number one thing with ran is all of his tools are so damn synergistic with each other right uh just having the highest speed uh he has immunity which lets him bypass a lot and contest for a lot of other fast characters even if you get somehow outsped and after all of that strip buffs defense break those things can never be they, they should honestly not ever be together but you know they are and that is the game we play yeah i, I so you're you're talking it's not only how much you bring to the table but it's how self-sufficient you are at the end of the day as well which i suppose is what makes Lya such a great character because of her high level of self-sufficiency and how much she brings to the table. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, we're going the way with some I look at it stuff. is Leia has what, it's the self-cleanse and full team cleanse of a mediator, uh, the turn-to-turn -turn utility of a Conqueror Lilius by pulling those dual attacks, and she has the finishing power of a Dark Corvus. All of those things put together just gives her way too much power in any given match. Okay, all right. I think we're... Um... 
We're closing down a little bit on this break time. Anything else you want to highlight that viewers should expect to see now that we're getting into the later set of the uh, of this match between two highly proficient players? Things so, are a little bit different here, right? Yeah, yeah. Go right. ahead. Game one, we we were obviously pretty worried for Cougar Bad. Like the draft did not. It, it looked like he was playing a very serious draft, and she really just rolled him over. And now I think. You know, game two, it looked like they were running it back, but Cougar Bat won looked like he won by a landslide. And I think we are in store for more of that, where sometimes the draft is not going to even be, imp like, it's not going to tell us how the match goes. And okay. I'm ready to see these guys pull out more drafts where we are going to be scratching our head, at, but hey, we're out here, we're excited, and we're going to see a lot more back and forth. Knock on wood, this does it. Anything short of this is a restart, so let's give it a whirl and see. Let's give it a whirl and see, he says, and I can't agree more. All right. Um, I'm definitely, as I said, excited to see us get back into these matches. As I, as we've clearly stated, you, me, and Val you, me, Valky, we're, we're, we're a couple normal guys, but we do have bias. We do have our inclinations, and I love nothing more than Cougar Bat's play style, who he is as a person. I'm rooting for him 100% in this, and we're already at a reverse of our previous situation. Laya going over to Magic Chi first, showing how much he's loved. And of course, the shoe coming out as the response to hinder and put down the effects of her massive HP pool and the effects, the, uh, the damage that brings with it. But then last time we didn't even get to see her do too much before she was put down. So hopefully the Carmen here protects and leads the way properly for her to get to show off her skills and maybe even a rat gun or two by the end. I mean, that is a really devious Crimson Armin take. This is the only other knight that Let's starts the game with a massive odds. barrier left in the game. And here taking that away from the Leia player means you are going to have to live with those injuries. However, Chi goes with the lacerated crowd. We are going to tempo up, get a little bit more aggressive, and ha Abyssal Yuffie comes out. Now, that is a unit you normally don't want to pick too early in a draft. However, Knockwool is out. You got the Aiden out as well. All of these natural enemies for her have just been removed through the process of the stacking bands. And suddenly, uh, even if you pick up a Navy Captain Landing, you might not be in the position where you can win versus the Abyssal Yuffie. She is looking so scary in this draft. Not too many hard counters for her, for her left in the game. One of the things we can be certain of is it, it's not going to be a Navy Captain Landy by herself. It's going to be her with some support as well. Wondering if we divot into the tech tree with the Bibliss one more time. And Wondering speaking of tech tree, Falconer yeah. Clurry being hovered here by Cougar Bad. Uh, that is a unit New that buffs. has got buffed recently. Mm -hmm. Able to remove 40% fighting spirit against the UV. She does get locked in here. Oh, that is a pick Didn't I want to see. And once again, Navy Captain Landy. That's the draft I want to see. Uh, so many interesting tech picks here for both players. And, uh, okay, I'm ready to any see this Falconer Clurry. Haven't seen her yet, actually. Any predictions for the artifact choice on the Falconer Clurry? Uh, assuming the Crimson Armin is on the Aureus, Falconer Clurry maybe Bastion or Perlucia. Um, ooh, yeah, providing even to... more of those barriers you wanted to highlight. That's what I was thinking. But something else might be going on. I think that's going to be an interesting point to keep on mind. When new units uh, get buffed, when they come back into the game, here, there's a the lot party. of choices. They're actually seeing she opt for the Biblis now, responding back with that. I think that's certainly very interesting. He doesn't have a, sell, a solid full all-in damage dealer like we talk about in a lot of uh, a lot of instances but like you were saying before all of these damage dealers that do you know i'm not going to hit you with the sword of god and send you back to the spawn zone but i am going to hit you with a fair amount of damage and i'm bringing even more to the table leia fits that lrk fits that abyssal Yufin fits that and b who fits that to a t I, I mean, Bihu is a draft. huge pick here because now Bihu this also has an exclusive equipment no that gives him unbuffable on his skill three. And unbuffable is exactly what you want when fighting versus the Urban Shadow Shoe, the Crimson Armin, and the Navy Captain Landy. Dark Corvus picked up for Cougar Bat as his last pick anchor, signaling to me he wants to play against the Abyssal Yuffie. So it is going to get banned out. And Biblis, very strong tech here against the Navy Captain Landy, gets removed as well. This is going to be the ban. This is the team's going into the match. These players are now setting up their imprints. And oh boy, 
I really want to see this Falconer Clurry go to town. I want to see this Falconer Clurry, but I also want to see how much she does borrowing from his enemy strategy, or at least the one first laid out at him. And I want to see who really takes the pace. Both of them got familiar with each other earlier, but it's really time to get down the business as the B who S3 comes out. Those unbuffables you talked about as well, but the Navy Captain Landy is spared from their onslaught. As we, as always, start with an immediate rip roar into the fatal target, the shoe. Most important one, as you said, oh, the shoe. As long as she much. cannot receive buff, she cannot get her passive to be going, and she can only stack the focus. And now, last rider crowd, bike comes in, gets a little bit of a cooldown reset here when the Navy Captain Landy counters. Not the best of spots for Cougar Bat, but Navy Captain Landy is already 50% fighting spirit and the defense break being fished and missing. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, on that Bihu, that is going to be a scary, scary rotation. She's doing what she can. We want to burn down this Bihu. He needs to go and he needs to go fast. Third stack of fighting spirit coming in for the Navy Captain Landy. It's, it's it's an interesting situation already developing up because unfortunately we're not going to get as the value that we want out of this falconer clurry but she might have a position just yet later on into the match dropping both the burns and the detonate onto the landing she's low could this next hit be fatal for her uh, it, it, it's a hell of a situation. Right Comes out. Ooh, it is the HU fine. I mean, the Abyss would be fine. Full spread, almost full spread of the attack breaks as well. It's only getting harsher and harsher for Kukrabat as the Maybe match goes on. Too hard. And you really needed that anti crit there. Attack down with. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, huge duel. Huge duel, Yuffie counters, but that's an orange number on the landing and it takes her out right away. <laughs> we were, oh, Cougar Bat, hoping he could push up and get that invincibility on her, protect her for at least one round or get some kind of action going. Still going to have to let it rip, but unfortunately, not exactly the situation, not exactly an ideal situation not able to set up his Navy Captain Lanny for success. Still has the I'll Urban Shadow right. Shoe here, trying to use her fish for her to close out the game. And this is one of those scenarios where you are fighting in a Why tournament. You a gotta try everything you can. Try every out. Falconer Glory healing the team up, taking, a, taking away Fighting Spirit away from the Yuffie, doing what she can. But Fight a it's harder, almost right? feeling like it's not enough. This might be one of those too little, too late situations. I mean, she's not letting up. Leia going to CR push the entire team. Drop the cooldown as well. And once again, Yuffie this looks staring down Cougar Bat. One more AoE scream comes through. I mean, it's not the craziest of the damage, but the damage is coming and it's coming in consistently. Yeah, we got the Operation Cream Pastry. These puffs need to be firing on all cylinders. Hoping to get a decent amount of damage, but it's another counterattack response, even on a single target. How do you feel it, about it happening to you, buddy? Ooh, and, you know, as, as the hits come through, it's looking tougher and tougher for Cougar Bat. Holding back. And, oh, another single attack. Counter attack. You, you hate to you see it. That, that's the whole point of a Falconer Flurry. You want to reduce a fighting spirit, but you're just dying to the counters. Game three goes over to Chi. It is unfortunate. Oh, well. But it does put she in the position to circumvent and put down Kukrabat as much as it hurts me to say that. Fleet has very powerful, skilled players as always, and they've brought their master of masters here to put down the French threat once and for all. <laughs> I mean, that's just what experience does for you. Uh, she has gone to what? I think two or three E7 WCs now. And that's just the tournament experience you see on full display. He knows how to play his game. He knows how to play slow and steady. And as we know, in tournaments like this, that is exactly what you need to do. If you're a nor naturally aggressive player, you got to tone it down a little bit. And yesterday we saw even XLR, I mean, known cleaver, uh, pivoting back down to a slower match, pivoting back down to playing tank down. Uh, just to adapt to the slower pace and and the volatility of a tournament. You do not want to go fast and have a higher chance of crashing and falling. And we saw last match. And at any time, there's just a dual attack. Oh, counter attack. Elbrus 
and that could throw the match completely off balance. It's really a statement about how things have been progressing for the last year, right? We always have these trendsetters, these meta setters, right? You knew it as Conqueror Lilius a couple years ago. We had so many units come out as a response to her. That's when we got a lot of the responses to, you know, non-attack skills, to extra turns, all that stuff. And now the meta has kind of set in to where players are prepped and ready to have more than enough responses to uh, to dual attacks to uh whatchamacallit to, in addition to counter attacks all these bruiser hps running around magic chi loaded up and ready for those kinds of competitive com uh competitive combatants really at the end of the day and Kukrabat is going to once again have to find an answer i'm not afraid that he could do it i'm more than certain he can do it but after that will that final push in that game five situation will he be able to do it i think that's the real question here on display Valkyrie and divine i'm going to try something here i'm going to try to just crash the emulator and restart it it should let me rejoin without pushing me out of the room hopefully that fixes things if not we will try to make sure that the point scores are remembered so that we can uh end this fight fairly but i think yeah, it's the only way to get this done without uh mm -hmm. without we leaving the room save. okay no worries yeah you do what you gotta do well uh, we'll, we'll keep 777 yeah, yeah. i mean i think like divine highlighted earlier um Kukurbat has one of those very adaptive teams, right? His entire account is tuned to play aggressive in very odd ways, if you will. And and I think this is one of those cases of like a unstoppable uh what, unstoppable force versus immovable object. I mean, Magic Chiefs, <laughs> he's been playing since season one. And from season one, he's always been one of the best bruiser players around. He's always pulling out the strongest tank down. He's 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 always adapting to his strategy to you know what i'll invite my opponent to take the first turn and when they're done playing i'll win the game well i i, I gotta say it's introducing a lot of variability i think that a lot of players don't even see too much in their own games well i'm certainly slamming it down on ranked i like to be a little bit of a, a coward as some might say Re respect to my wallet warriors i'm relying almost entirely on Moonlights, but you know, we're seeing Bihu get play here. We're seeing, of course, uh, a little bit with the Rowana coming out and getting banned out very early on. And you know, Lua, which is a character almost no one sees. I don't think she really sees too much play. I don't really know how much uh, she is into the meta, but uh, you almost never see her. So I'm excited to see a lot of these, you know, infrequent RGBs getting play, if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. And you know, when it comes to infrequent RGBs, uh, what's your, what's on your wish list next? You know, like what would have to come out for Divine Shadow to jump out of his seat and get insanely hyped? Uh, can we give Kane a real purpose? You can, oh, can, can we can we get can we get post Rift Kane, please? Can we? Uh, okay, can okay. we get post Rift Kane to do something? <laughs> Let, let's say we didn't know Kane was a Rift unit. What, what, what is your expectation of what he does in PvP? What do you think his role is? I think his role should be damage. I think it should be... Honestly, I want to say what his answer, what the answer is to me, but I realize as I think about it, his answer, my answer of what it would be, is just what Jeremy Lin currently is. That, that's exactly what I'm saying, yeah, right? About to say. I, I, you know, when you're like, yeah, I want him to, to, to bash people's faces in. I want him to smash tanks right open. I'm like, pause. I think you're talking about our boy. Uh, you're talking about our boy Jotaro over there Jotaro. looking in the wings, being global banned. He's like the Squidward meme. <laughs> yeah, I the just. Squidward meme watching Patrick and SpongeBob outside have fun. I feel so terrible about it because I only realized just now looking at it that I'm like, yeah, everything I wanted at him got stolen by the next fire unit that just came right along and just said, all right, you're invalidated. Yeah, he, no he's just a Squidward here. meme out here trying to look at the other characters, have fun. He's like, hey, just, man, I, you, you're running a tournament. I, I want to play, too. I, I, I would like that. You know, I'd like something to give a little bit of respect to all our four stars that don't get used. Like, I get it. I get it. If you don't have a speed imprint, it kind of sucks. But, like, at this point, if we're not going to make too many new four stars, if I'm already expecting Veronica to get, like, some kind of change that makes her even better at the end of episode five story, not only that she's more relevant, she only gets more relevant each patch because we're in vampire land and everyone has immortality now in their kit. You know, I'd, li mm -hmm. I'd like to see Blue Crows that I'm going to be honest with you. 
That's always my bias. I'd like to see maybe not Corvus. Corvus could stay where he was. He had his time. But like a couple of the other four stars also making an appearance, you know. Anyone remember Roman? Oh, <laughs> Roman. Roman. I, you know, I didn't even think about that. I think you're absolutely on to something. Uh, four star units just get such short end of the stick when it comes to PvP, don't they? Now that I'm yeah. thinking about it, like all the five star units are either good or they have a very well defined niche. Um, three star units, uh, you're not going to care about them, but they are going to be receiving specialty changes somewhere down the line. And when they do, if you get your hands on an air wall type unit, well, that unit's going to be around forever. Uh, all right, four star guys. Units, oh, boy. I Speed think we got it. You think you got it? All right, let, let's see it. Let's see it. Fingers crossed this takes care of it. Yeah. All right, fingers crossed. Hoping this restart frees up some of our RAM space and we can get the series started once again. And we can close out the series between Kukurbad and Magic G. Well, not just now. yet. I'm waiting for the revenge from Kukurbad. But I just want to say thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for staying us through these technical difficulties. Even if it's a slideshow, it's a show I'd watch a million times as long as if it's with someone like you. Now, don't take that too far. But what we do see immediately is Urban Shadow Shoe lining up the front, not even a bruiser in sight, but she's still here to bring that damage, to bring that injury, and maybe even to put Magic Chi in a little bit of a corner. Really think about what you're picking before you get to commit. I'll tell you what, Knock Wolf's banned, Roana's banned, now Biblis and Dark Corvus is banned as well. I wonder at what point do we start seeing Navy Captain Landy being taken away first. And wow, Chief being extremely respectful. We take away the Leia as expected. Uh, so Kukurbat, you know, pre-takes the Urban Shadow Shoe to try to threaten Chief's Leia pick with the injury. But no, we like the Leia. We like the consistency she brings. And we are going to pick her protection first just to have that barrier to protect versus the injury. Kukurbat needs to think about whether he wants to pick up the Navy Captain Landy or he wants to fight her. I mean, that is going to be such an important unit in this draft. Do you play around her? Do you play against her? And both players are trying to play footsies right now with each other. Nobody wants to commit to her too early, but you can't commit to her too late because if you are committing to her too late, you do not have enough ways to fight against her. Respect to my man's name. We, we talked about running out of those tanks that could really protect and keep you safe to here towards the end. But Eden is still out there somewhere in the West Wings. And speaking of characters in the West Wings that we never see too much of, we get the actual unit fam famous for and made made almost uh, just for our third caster who'll be joining us next week, Car6, the maid Chloe, finally debuting on the stage in her new skin and followed up by Falconer Clurry once again. Hopefully the S3 works this time. And that I mean, will be that devastating. Is just a especial because we know French player like to opt for that maid Chloe. They like to opt for that high ER tank down. And there it is, Cougar Bass slamming the maid Chloe. Pick we haven't seen for a hot minute now re being responded to by Magic's Navy Captain Landy. And oh boy, oh, we are going to see one of those cases of a classic tank down. Well, it, not even a response. I'd say Navy Captain Landy is kind of the character that comes out no matter what you want to see. And the Meteor Le Cloeric, uh, the, 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 the Le Media Tour? <laughs> Cloeric Le Media Tour coming out now. Um, Interesting application here. Definitely can possibly uh, strip the revo revive off one of the key targets. You know, puts up a barrier as well. I actually do like the idea of getting even stacking up even more barriers with his presence there. And of course, cleansing away the effects of this Falconer Clurry might have to be the ban if I'm going to be honest with you. But then again, I don't play this game and I'm lucky I don't because I definitely yeah. wouldn't match up to the skill of either of these competitors or the gear they've definitely got on their Midnight God Lilius, hoping to take the first turn here, take a very strong meaty bite into one of these heavier HP bruisers and followed up by the Shroon at the end. I mean, you see the Magic Chief set up. He's got the Leia. He's got the Mediator. He really wants to cleanse any and all debuffs coming towards him. And both of these characters just happen to share one big weakness. They're really weak to Galilulius. <laughs> one shot them. So Galilius gets taken out. And that, that is such a clever pick from Chi. He picks up a Rimuru as a way to choke out the Galilulius. And that forces the ban. And he bans out the Galilulius. Gal I think if Kukurbat really wanted to play around it, he could have, uh, you know, been, been cute, could have been clever around it. But goes for the safe ban. 
And now he's stuck once again fighting this Navy Captain Landy. Can't forget about the effects on that flurry, uh, that flurry S1. We did talk about earlier how it was very effective at getting you out and um, uh, taking away that fighting spirit, but also pushing up an ally as it does give Maid Chloe the chance to stun. She misses the stun. We get some basic attacks here and there. Cooldown going down. The first rip of an S3 and the first counter. We'll see. This Landy is certainly feeling feisty today. And once again, the power of that protection set. Look at our Leia. After a whole S3 untouched and another barrier just comes right back. Sharoon now needs to do her work here. She's going to strip all the buffs and peel away these uh, these annoying barriers. And we want to let this Venom damage start ticking against Chi as soon as possible. His units are too tanky. We need to work down their max HP, do percentage-based damage. And that's Cougar Bass game plan. However, Navy Captain Landy doesn't agree. Two shadows keeps now. So damage coming through. Can you survive against this? The cannons are firing almost one after another. Full Star Wars blast on the enemy team. We thought they were going to be able to come on board and at least wreck some havoc. But these pirates are going to be heading off for Sully, Sully Shores pretty soon. If the captainess herself doesn't stop a little bit of healing to mend and bend the ship. Keep her steady for just a little bit longer, Captain coming out from the Maid Chloe and the Revive so that if our if our poor sailors fall overboard, they can at least get a chance to be hoisted back up onto this, off of the dirty sea themselves. I mean, you gotta do what metaphor. you can at this point. <laughs> you gotta keep your team alive. That revive buff is going to be huge. It, it'll keep you alive through these turbulent times versus the, the counter salvo versus that Leia who is eventually going to throw her bass guitar at one of these juicy looking targets and blast them out of the game. And that revive is what anchors these units to the game. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I gotta say, what a high value S3 out of the Mediator there as well. Setting it up in almost a perfect place and followed up by the full team invincibility. Those buffs mean business on both sides, as a matter of fact. So you get a little bit of a value S3. This, this Crimson Armor is going crazy. But when you have your entire team with invincibility, the one thing you don't want to see, and oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, that's where the Falcon of Clary does her work. Strips every buff off the Navy Captain Lanny. Provoke and defense break for two turns. And without any cooldowns, uh, you are going to have to fight through this. You are going to have to hope your Navy Captain Landy makes her anti-crit. We need to give this Leia another turn ASAP. Hoping not I mean, to see can... counter. Hoping not to see counter. No counter seen there. The two-turn decrease. We've got increases to our speed, our attack, our crit damage. And we've got a mega gun with five rats who are ready to fire on all cylinders. The crit comes through. The damage is true. And it blasts her off of the Stalbert. The captain is gone. Abandon ship, ye bastards. I mean, Navy Captain landy has got to get out of here. Meteor doesn't even strip. Misses the strip on the revive. That's massive. That's going to be what keeps your units alive and in the game versus this Leia. Leia usually able to close out so many games by herself with no DPS. But in this case, it's looking a little bit tough for his side. Leia now going to offer the S2 to try to tempo back her team. Going to play around this revive. Let the revive wear out and try to kill these units within the small minuscule opening with when the May Chloe does not have the buff up, keeping her team safe. You know what I love the most about Cougar Bat's team here on the left side? It's not only the addition of the CR manipulation through the Clary's S1, but it's also the speed buffs being provided out by the rat allows the Maid Chloe to take enough turns that that healing on her S2 passive is really coming in clutch. It's providing a whole host of helping effects to the entire team. And it's really keeping us in when a lot of people wouldn't necessarily consider Maid Chloe a true, uh, true healer. She's doing more than her fair bit shining on that stage right now. And I mean, Falconer Clory does pretty much the same. You had two units on speed buff going turn by turn by turn by turn. And the passive healing they provide does add up and it's completely keeping his team alive. Chi now, he needs to pull the trigger. We are going to take out the shoe first. And Shu, with that soul burn, will fall. Orius on the Falconer Clory. We are going to absorb a good chunk of damage. And now with the extra turn, Leia needs to start playing her song faster. She needs to tempo up and get that ultimate back. We need to pick off this Mate Chloe before she gets the revive back. However, Cougar Bat looking at two souls to his name. So the Mate Chloe is going to be able to make some soul burn plays and get that revive back ASAP. That is his out.
That is most definitely his out. And unfortunately, the team only has damage every couple of turns. Not too consistent. Meteor Quare can hit, but I'm not sure he hits the bricks hard enough to put down that rat. He's gonna ha he's gonna have to make a New Yorker play, stomp it with his Tims if he wants if he wants her gone for good. <laughs> Don't laugh at that is, one. Is that really a New Yorker play? Have you not seen yo, bro? Have you I, never I, seen a New Yorker throw like grab a brick out of a building and throw it at a fucking rat? I have never <laughs> seen that in my bro, life. Bro, that's a classic that's New Yorker wild. play. It's terrifying, bro. Like, where, people... where are you guys getting so many rats from? I'm yo, it's just the sewers. It's just it's just bilge rats, bro. They're coming overboard. They're from Landy's ship themselves. We see that play no. that you were just talking about with the push-up coming out of the mediator uh, of the mediator, but he's stunned for the moment. The S3 that he's got, however, will make sure that the stun isn't really too much of a problem. What is a problem is bringing back all Which these people, including like see? The, the the rat the once again. She's not going to be she's probably not going to survive for too long, but she's gonna tank, and by tank I I mean, constantly demand hit after hit out of Magic Cheese team. He can't take much more of this injury damage if he wants to win. I mean, Magic Cheese needs to be able to put this rat back down so he can start saving his Leia cooldowns for this May Chloe, because for as long as this May Chloe lives, she's always going to be able to revive the shoe. His other units, especially with that speed buff, just generate too many souls. And now with speed down on Magic Cheese side, he will have a hard, it'll be harder and harder for him to keep Keep up with the tempo that this shoe made Chloe composition can be generating. Yep. You got the turns, you got the turns pushing up as always on Maya, but you've also got the turns pushing back from our Shroon there, you know, plotting whatever she's plotting and recycling back. The flurry S3 is here again. And like you said, I think the Shroon plays an integral part in this. We saw her earlier being able to delay the cooldowns against the Leia, and now she's doing the same thing versus the Mediator Coeric, and on top of all of that, she is also generating Venoms, which is going to be injuring these HP scaling units, make them hit softer and softer throughout the game. Another the stun! Ooh, the longer this game drags out, the harder this game is going to be for Magic Chi, and Urban Shadow Shu is going to get another blast here. Defense break on the Leia, offs for the hit, and ooh! Doesn't exactly so offer, cool. but she's not looking long for this it's, world. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a GG state on that. Once again, the 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 S1 getting the stun, enabling the team with what is it? Another combat readiness increase, as we said before. All these minor effects that we were talking about, not the key parts of people's kits, but the healing off of the flurry S1, the speed buff off of the shoe of the shoe S3, all of these minor factors, the healing off of the S2, all these little things that. Don't don't distinctively make someone a healer or a support or you know like a, a, a character that really pushes the idea of combat readiness in a way that you would think lots or Amelia does all these things have added up to make these micro plays yes display unit these micro these micro optimisms I'd even say to really engage a, a, a total dominating strategy from Kukabat. I mean, like you highlighted, it's just he was Cougar Bat was riding that line so carefully, and it, it was very fortunate for him that he was able to take out the Navy Captain Landy early. Because if we remember back to the beginning of the fight, which seemed like ages ago, that Navy Captain Landy counter salvo, counter salvo, Cougar Bat was being put on his last legs, and by the time that we've dragged the match out to the end of the game, a Cougar Bat was looking insanely healthy and. That soft sustain being propped up turn by turn on the speed buff you can get from the Urban Shadow Shoe, it just played out so much in his favor and keeping him in the game. It was a brilliant set of plays. I can't wait to see what they do next. Yep. I, just like and last time, I've got to throw it to Chad and ask. We're at another 2 2 situation. What do you think? Is it Cooker Bat, the French chef who cooks it up in this final set and serves a beautiful seven course meal to end off the dine dish of Magic Chi? Or does he pull deep into his routes and through wisdom, prevalence, and that winner's mentality, does Fleet send out their best to deal with the rest, putting down the French menace before he's even tested hard? Hard. The Leia comes out first, but my question still stands. Who wins this final set, and are you ready? I am absolutely ready, Divine. Yesterday, we got to see a pretty hype back and forth game five, 
and once again we find ourselves at this juncture i mean the leia comes out galilius out the game now Shu, as well as the crimson armin being picked up we talked about this during the last draft crimson armin is now the premier tank in the game with Arawal out on that pre-ban list oh boy chi needs to find some tricks in his in his kit to be able to uh, choke out Kukrabat and limit his options. Otherwise, Kukrabat looks like he has Chi playing into his hands. Yes, chat Chris seems pretty one. divided on this poll. They can't tell if the bat or the magic man is going to win this one. The magic bat. Uh, uh, could you pull up the actual uh, the ban list for the stream as well here for a second? Because I'm just I just want people to really get a look at how the history of this match has developed, how far we've come. We're out of Death Dealer Ray, a great source of venom and a great way of stealing turns, especially from these bruisers. We've lost Lua. I don't know what that character does. We've lost Zeo, a premier unit that comes out, silences, and denies first pick, so it's a lot more viable. Knock walls out. I also don't know what that unit does. Conqueror Lilius, our stalwart. Rowan is missing. Savior Auden can't deal with some of these dark units like you find who's just been picked. A great answer. Can't stun the rat with um um unbound knight and arrow well as well as get rid of those buffs biblis is out dark corvus is down for the count even a rimmer won't be making a reappearance this collab and midnight gala lilius to deal with the bruisers it's a tapestry of history of what's going into this final match and that's why our competitors are taking so long to place their picks because you don't have to be sure you have to be sure with less options than ever before I mean, Navy Captain Landy gets locked in here for Cooper Bat. Really important, Navy. Uh, we get that May Chloe right here, right now, because if you look at the unit spread, the, the Urban Shadow Shoot, the Crimson Armin, if you don't over set up an early round of cleanse to pr be able to protect these guys, something like a Payra, and we know Chi is known for how strong his Payra matches are, uh, we'll just be able to lock you right away. So that is huge. May Chloe, not the most favorable unit you can pick into the Abyssal Yuffie but you need a form of cleanse and she is going to have to do. She's going to have to do. I wonder if Kukrat is once again looking at a possible ending here with the flurry. Things seem to be more than well set up for her as well. The lone Crescent Bologna going over to Magic Chi, being more than able to deal with these set up buffs that we're gonna be starting with. We were talking about before the protection set providing a barrier, but also the anti-crit. It's gonna be a hard couple first turns to really do any damage. And it seems like the prayers have been answered. It seems like the calls from chat have indeed been responded to. Pooch shouting out for a special character, AOL to make an appearance, and she just does. It just at the right time too with how much we saw buffs playing an impact in this last match i think it's a more than a smart choice with alvira rounding out the draft what do you think Val? that's that's a really cute force fan i mean she alvira is like the one true partner to navy captain landy anything that could beat navy captain landy in a pretty fair fight uh generally relies on fighting spirit and as fighting spirit unit goes uh, <laughs> you have to ban alvira otherwise they just don't work so Elvira forces the band as well as the Angel of Fly. We talked about how devastating unbuffable can be to Urban Shadow Shoe as well as Crimson Armin. Uh, the Make Chloe might fight back against it, but once you get tagged with those buffs and if you eat a silence as well, um, your chances look pretty bad. We're going into the last match, and forgive my butchering of your language, but it seems that there's one message chat wants to say for Kukurbad. Ramin la coupe à la maison, vas-y, coucou, à l'aise. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming it's good. I'm assuming it's you how I go cooker bat or something. I don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure they're saying some very nice things about it. The French are known to just be able to cheer each other on like that. Ooh, Supporting each other, that's what they're known for. She cheered yeah. on a counter into a salvo, but against a lone crescent Bologna. I don't know if that's what you want. Magic Chiefs have made a living for years playing the likes of Seaside Bologna. So now that we have a better version of her, he takes a turn, rips the S3, goes right into the Crimson Armin. Going to be able to hold down so much of that damage, but... I'm about to say, it didn't even look like it hit. In fact, it, a, a good portion of it got healed almost immediately by the maid. I'm, we're hoping that she gets the support she needs, and she's already handing out a lot of that support. Attack buffs, revive buffs, and plenty of debilitating damage heading out. We love saying debilitating. I love saying debilitating because it's debilitating. It's damage coming out, breaking straight through the barriers, and already doing a good amount of injury to the Laia. LRK soon to follow. 
So going by the eye test, uh, Magic Cheese Draft looked really good to me because not only were you able to keep your Abyssal Euphine, but you got to keep the the Lone Crescent Bologna as well, who is just so strong in the Navy Captain Landy, especially when you're proccing so many counters and salvos. And look at that. As we speak, another counterattack procs Elber's Ritual Sword. Malone is going to bat back another wave of damage. And I know you got a revive buff, but that is not long for this world when you're eating so many waves of extra attacks from the Bologna. Something I want to highlight as well, the captain has already stacked the deck. All the ships are prepared to fire. Her buff, uh, uh, her passive, I believe she's at four or five stacks. So when that ship lands, it's going to hurt. It's going to it's going to sail those sure seas, and it's going to sail those sure seas safely with the protection as well from the arrow well. We saw earlier in the tournament the, right. the utility Not and the Airwell. power of a Crimson <laughs> Armin protecting when you have a full fighting spirit holiday, uh, uh, holiday, Abyssal Euphine, giving her that big skill, big power. And we're doing the same thing for Navy Captain Landy, who's staring down his opponent right now. Dropping anchor, the ship is coming in. And the damage is knocking out two units off of Magic G's side. And the bat bag not going to be enough. And she is looking like he's in such a tight spot for game five of this set. Of the, of, of the challenges cup by App Gallery EU. Oh my goodness! Could you imagine being told, you can't hurt me until you deal with this person who's protecting me, and then you look over, and the person that you gotta deal with is invincible! The Carmen eating up this damage and eating it up gladly because she can't take any of it right now. It's the perfect defender! It's the stalwart wall! It's the French militia in its full effect! Even that counterattack doesn't do much at all as we line up the enemy team to fall! It was just such a clean turn from Kukrabat. I mean, I don't know how he lined it up. I thought she had to have been favored for this draft. And just we got into a position where he was able to knock out two units in one fell swoop. And this is not just your garden variety Abyssal Yuffie, your, your average Leia. That Leia was near 30,000 HP and she just got blown away in a single hit. I could not believe what I just saw. We're doing even more injury. We're, de we're doing as much as we can. Doesn't even decide to burn because the target is going to be someone who will be coming back through a revive very quickly. Now, another counterattack, healing up, but not doing the damage. There's got to be some hope right now that this kills. You There's have to go for it here. You have to trust in your landing damage. However, the extra attack bounce back comes first. And, ooh doesn't take your team out and now he eats the salvo which procs the last rider kraus barrier that is barely keeping him in there the revives are starting to wear off it looked real good for Kukrabat, but is chi actually mounting a comeback if it's going to be anything it needs to work and it needs to work now last rider kraus gets a turn and lone crescent Bologna following closely after how do you get into a position to get a win? I think Magic needs to fish for a counterattack and hope for no salvo. That Bologna counterattack needs to go. Counterattack does come. Is there a salvo? Bologna bats back right here. This damage needs to hit and it needs to push. No kills comes through. No kills. The S3 is ready on deck and you have to remember that we're only one turn away from the maid of, no, we are ready for the maid to bring out another party. But the shoe does take the S3. If this is also going to buff up the entire team right now, unless it doesn't kill. I can't believe that miss killed. Oh my God. Magic's known for having crazy gears to go on the Bruiser and that might just cost him the game. What happened? I can't believe my eyes. The shoe survives. It's a nice try, but it's not enough. Kukrabat, as I said before, had enough in the tank to come back and he had even more to take it all the way to a victory. And I... just like you said, the French chef out of Le Cordon Bleu absolutely takes the entire set. It was so back and forth. You know, we saw him ahead. We saw him behind. And at the end of the day, he grabs the entire series and seizes it for himself.
both fantastic players, both taking the win. And I'm afraid to say that that action, as much as it was over the top, as much as it was exciting to see, and as much as it bent and broke my mind, isn't going to be all we're seeing today. We've got a, a, a well-known player in the global scene, Winter Witch and Watchem, fighting off here at the end of the top eight. You're already seeing matches this crazy, and we haven't even headed to the finals. I don't want to delay. I don't want to stop. I want to keep pushing just like all of our players and get us right into the next match. You boys ready? Absolutely. I mean, we got to see a French chef absolutely go to town last set. And now we're running that back once again with Watchum, who is a disciple of the KHM way, as well as Winterwish. Now you a saw A disciple him of the KHM. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got to see a lot of a lot of Winter Witch during E7WC. I mean, if you're familiar with, with that tournament, you'll be familiar with how strong Winter Witch is whenever Navy Captain Landy is strong, because we already know his strongest character is that Lone Here Crescent Bologna. Surely his would have missed kills, right? Yes, absolutely. The match is heating up with the action. Everybody get tight, get cozy. This is already a Crimson Army. Uh, yo, <laughs> even more to see. We're all getting ready for an exciting match right now. Um, Navy Captain Landy, as well as Last Rider Crow, picked up for Winter Wish. This is where the pre bands do a lot of work uh, for Watchem in particular. When that knock wall is out of the game, Abyssal Euphine is just so much better. She's so much more consistent at having her own win condition. And now we got the Urban Shadow Shoe as well. We saw this set how much power she conveys when there is a Leia, when there is a Last Rider Crow. And Winter Wish needs to be able to find a draft where he does not let the injuries take him over and push him out, edge him out of the, this match. But also at the same time, if you play a little bit too slow, you do get punished by the Abyssal Euphine. So Washam has set up an absolutely deadly draft in this spot. Now, if there's something I can yeah, tell I you right now about the European scene, it's 2 a.m. right there. So watch him making a very clear decoration. It's night yeah. night for you, Winter Wish, putting an end to the cold opening of this frid of this frigid master as he's pulling out character after character to put put our uh, for this Sandman to put Winter Wish to sleep for good, as well as the rest of the audience, wishing for a quick, decisive end and to close Winter Wish's eyes once and for all. That's the necophilia known as Watchem. I mean, that is the power of running something like the Hua Young, the Briar, which I Oh wait, this is a real match. The slower okay, competition uh, compositions, because what the slower your composition is, the less buff strips. <laughs> you don't have these aggressive utilities to strip away the buffs to land the key debuffs against your opponent. And when it comes to these hot, slower matches, Winter Wish knows exactly when to speed them back up. And that's exactly what the Huayu and Briar Witch will do, but the Briar Witch gets fanned out as alongside the Ocean Breeze Luluka. Now, as these guys get into the match, I am going to run to the restroom real quick. Good luck, Divine. I'll be back. Well, there's going to be no rest for everyone here, as you're going, unfortunately going to have to deal with a solo casting situation out of me, Divine Shadow, showing you once again how important it is when Laia goes out. The rat has to put her down. Plenty of units as well to suffer in that wake as well, but might actually be helping the Huayang to get a little bit of that extra damage and, a, and incur a little bit extra wrath as the target is clear. It's got to be that Crimson Armin. Can't let her survive as much as we saw previously is in the set as we're set ready and ready to go turning on the bike full force AOE damage almost putting out the Crimson Armin down immediately and on that note of putting things down immediately do we have enough out of the Midnight God Lilius we'll see the numbers here popping up in just a second yes it's a complete explosion of the damage pushing up with the attack pushing it even forward more damage is going to be coming out and I wonder if the team can handle it which wish down a character pressed out and he's not going to be able to take out one of his own because the invincibility comes out in full spirit protecting the entire team except for one person who definitely doesn't need it the midnight god lily is taking a chomp and protecting herself with that damage limit buff i've got to say it's already looking bad i mean we knew winter witch was going to try to ag use aggression to pace up the tempo of the match so he doesn't have to play versus these things like the injury and the 
Abyssal, you think win condition. However, Lily is just so domineering here, not able to let Winters play his pace in the match and just knocking out one of his units immediately. I'm assuming that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's oh, it's, it's definitely it was definitely a knockout. It was definitely Midnight Gala came out. It was just right back, and that was the end of it. Ooh, Navy Captain Landon goes through the soul burn here. We do take out the Gala Lilius, however, the shoe is going to have enough for an S3 right here. That's the power of the Urban Shadow shoe. You get that speed buff, and she just loops her turn. She comes back right away, able to blast one of your units out of the game. And in this case, it will be the Leia who survives the hit, but. The injury does not keep her long for this world, and the Yuffie, one attack, crits the Landy, almost takes out two characters. Want to go with one poor Elbrus towards the end, but it's not going to be. Winter Wish falls to watch him almost immediately. Clever drafting, intelligent picks, and most importantly, the damage in that Midnight Lala, uh, Midnight, <laughs> Midnight Gala Lilius to stand Midnight Lala up. Midnight Lilius being the only Lullaby. thing saving us from these slow matches. Just doing so much damage, uh, true damage, def full defense penetration, mind you, versus uh, all of these tanks that are slowing down the game. Truly the hero we need, but do not deserve. Truly the hero we need, but do not deserve. Uh, going into set, uh, game number two of this set, I mean, whew, these, these French player came out here swinging today. I, I wasn't expecting them to be able to... Uh, to, to, to just come out and be so the domineering. The French present, that's what I say. They're here, they're here, and they have no fear in their hearts. And Conqueror Lily has picked up for Winter Witch again, and this time watch him going to default back up again to the Abyssal U theme with the Leia. These are two of the strongest characters in the game, and with these pre-bans, I think they are even stronger once again. Navy Captain Landy locked in for winner. Do not want to play against both of them. And instead of going for the last Rider crowd, we're going for Leia's older brother, Mediator Kowarik, who essentially did her job before, before she, you know, before she existed. But she just does more. Is this how you want to structure your draft? You're gonna have to structure it in such a way to prevent a lot of what your enemy's doing, but also advance your own strategy and an interesting pick. It seems that the spirit of Prof Boy still stands well and alive, possessing Watchum to go into the Shuna pick. Obviously, I'm joking a little bit because it's, you know, sh uh, his Shuna and not a 220 speed uh, Shuna with 100 uh, F res and 50 effectiveness, but still going to do, it's, it's a much better one that's gonna do uh, a much realer job. And speaking of people who do real man jobs, Ambitious Tywin comes out last on the left side. Ambitious Tywin is actually a fairly strong pick versus the Abyssal Yuffie, who's always going to be triggering his passive with the attack downs. So definitely a solid pick there. You want to fish for a massive defense break. That'll win you the game. How? But one of the biggest concerns with that is when you're picking it into something like the Crimson Army with a two-turn immunity, uh, how often can you get that panned out? So, wow. Once again, we're ah, just as we're talking about this matchup that's going to decide the match, both units get panned out, so that's not going to be a factor. Yeah, we're seeing the crew. As you said, the Crimson Armin has got to go. She cannot stand. We cannot stand to have that level of mitigation in much of the match going forward. And speaking of stand, stand at attention, ladies and gentlemen. Your conqueror Lilius is here presenting her fury and her and the soul consideration out of the Shuna as well. Ooh, pretty big dual attack. We're going to land a lot of damage on this Arya here. And once again, the shoot just out of the first turn was able to ch chonk this Arya down to one third HP. And the Mediator S2 comes out as well, getting her to 15% health. You really got to clear those debuffs. You really got to get your Arya back into this match. Otherwise, you are down a unit. Communism. And you are down early. I'm sorry. I can't, I, can't get over, I can't get over the health equalization. It's too, it's too funny to me. It's too funny. It's just like, I'm not going to heal. We're all going to feel better together. Like... And, and that's the strength of the Shuna when you're facing so much single target damage, right? You might have chunked one unit down all the way, but if you do not put that last one HP to rest, I mean, she's just going to get healed back. Not to full, but it's going to look pretty good for her. And now uh, the, your team is so, sort of stuck in this awkward spot where, ooh, wait, I wasn't expecting that. 
that Arya just ate a provoke. She did indeed just eat a provoke and a dual attack as well, which gets a response of not one, but also two counter attacks. I'd say that's also kind of communist, right? It was a fair amount, you know, the same amount that went in is the same amount that came out. One guy gets a duel. Very the other balanced guy gets game. Counter. Yeah, it's very balanced game in a weird way, right? Right, but I mean, I mean, I will look at the fact that the Yuffie is, is already at 40 fighting spirit, whereas the Landy is currently at none, and that might make it difficult for Winterwish to be able to mount this comeback off of game two. Watch him took game one convincingly, and now, oof, S3 comes out for Shuna. We are going to strip a lot of buffs. Mediator as well as the Urban Shadow Shoe gets put to sleep. Urban Shadow Shoe being put to sleep is actually huge to stop her from being able to pop this turn. And dual attack comes out from the Aria. Big blast here. It's going to strip even more buffs and push And put out the defense break. You know, that defense live, break, I, I do believe that is like Scroll of Shadows. That's insane. Defense break on the Navy Captain Lane. One of the few ways to really easily edge her out of the fight. Counter attack, Salvo keeps her very much in there, flushes out the rest of Watchem's unit out of stealth, and we are going to fight a, you know, a, one of these fair matches where Ari is not just protecting all of your units. Soulburn, Navy Captain Lanny comes through. We're trying to chip down as much damage as we can. Not falling to that defense break. We're going to cycle past it. And the Abyssal, Abyssal Yuffine is now one stack, one turn away from being able to have her pop-off moment. A nice little swipe out of the Meteor Quirk there. Swiper, no swiping, as we follow up with the Rat Gun, our favorite attack to put to push back against these HP scaling bruisers. Lai is gonna take plenty, and it's also gonna pop out the Aria as well. I was not expecting the Aria to just also get popped by that Mr. damage. Lia now needs to go. Dual attack comes out from Yuffine. We take out the Conqueror. Lilius, however, does provoke a counter attack from the Landy if that Salvo would have looked real bad for watching. So now Winter, needs to find his edge and he needs Let to be able to push himself to back right into a win equalize the set score at what? one apiece is that is his goal right here right now the attack can go clear on to the u but he opts against it trying to avoid the counter attack gets hit with it anyway an unfortunate mess two thousand more of that injury damage coming out but nothing injures quite like trauma the lingering memories of her backstory which i refuse to read push her forward and pushes the entire team back but a counter attack swipes all that away an unfortunate page none of us need to read winter wish takes the lead you well, really wanted the Lanny to go first right there, but that you think which is ever so slightly faster. And at that point, uh, how, how, how to say, it's like, you know what I mean. When that, when that Abyssal Yuffine is at 100 Fighting Spirit and she's the only one left standing, she is going to need to win that game. And there it is. Match Stand score equalized to one apiece. Yes, yeah, standing tall after the second match, just like Shuma is standing tall after the three month sub. Thank you very much for your respect to the channel. Thank you every, very much for everybody tuning in on the match as we're currently going in, in the bottom of the eighth set, but with this match between Winter Wish and Watchem, Plenty of strong opponents have already shown their faces, and even more exciting matches are sure to come in the Huawei sponsored tournament. Thanks to our partners over there and Epic 7 overall as well. You can check out the Huawei store, you can check out all the links provided. I don't do this YouTube stuff, so. I'm sure they're somewhere around here. I, every time I point, I get the wrong direction. But you can find fantastic discounts on all your packs as these two opponents prepare to pack each other up. Yeah, and whenever these guys are ready, we're heading into game three of this set. Winter Wish, E7WC finalist versus Watchem, one of the, one of the also E7WC competitors from France. Now we got two more White Knights banned out. I do nice. believe Airwell is still in the game, so that is going to be well, an extremely be high priority. These fellas would have to fight over. But first pick, Abyssal Yuffin. I mean, she was not able to come through last match, but we are putting a lot of our hopes in her. She is going to I'll need to carry it. on our hopes and dreams. Conquer Lilius, as well as Navy Captain Landy being the main response that Winter will employ here. Pretty standard, pretty pretty fair, but I think it's more than fair to, you know, still feel things out at this point in the tournament. Now, as we said before, things are only gonna get more and more tricky later on. Save a little bit of that brain space and just go with the obvious easy so answers and nothing quite says obvious like the unbound knight arrow well 
just like I have popularized the phrase, I alone, the premier mitigation knight, that's right, I was the first person to ever say that, about this key character, Airwell, right here in front of you, joined by our premier bruiser opener now, Laya as well. Absolutely, Devon, I learned so much RTA from you, I don't know what Thank I you. would do without you, and of Thank course, you. When you have these tanky units, when you have these units with high HP, high defense, uh, you are going to want to be able to snipe them out of the game real fast with that Huayang. And once again, Last Rider Crow as the main tank for Winter Wish. Uh, not so much defensive utility, but we do like Last Rider Crow because he could be played very aggressively. And that's one card Winter always likes to hold over his opponents. He likes to randomly pivot aggressive. And this might be another one of those times where we just see him Is go fast and he's ready to, to kill. Uh, we got some last picks here that we've lined up possibly to... Oh, uh, could it be another made... Made Chloe's getting a lot of action. No, unfortunately, it's a pivot straight into the Angel of Light, Angelica. Interesting well, to why see Why is how Weird Al texting me that he's coming to my house? I'm gonna throw you off your game here for a second. Why is, <laughs> why is Weird Al's like, hey, hey, uh, here's my ETA. <laughs> How do I respond to that? I think he still thinks that you guys are doing lunch together. I think he heard uh, it has to be before five as all right at five. Regardless of what's going on in real life, we've got another Alvira pick coming in at the end. Love to see this kind of stuff as the selection of bands. Uh, the Alvira has to, is probably definitely going to be banned. But I'm excited to see what it says from Elsa. No, she's. Watch out! It's, it's not. It's actually going to be the Sea Lilies instead, as well as the Angel of Light Angelica. Valk a little bit distracted, but I'm I'm ready and geared and into this tournament 100%. Being joined by Redos, who's already missed the Arunka pick. Unfortunate for him. Oh, yeah, Arunka. I love Arunka. I hate <laughs> RNG. <laughs> I hate yep. Elbrus and I hate RTA. That's me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I need to hide my hair. Yup, that's me. I'm red. <laughs> uh, so like, Honkai Impact is really <laughs> enough. Enough of enough of the decisive. Um, I should I should call that kind of slander a debuff in all honesty. But no, instead it's it's it getting back and focusing on the match. Hua Young's up. Obviously, she's made her way back into the meta. I don't know how she did it, but. Her feet are ready, rip, roaring, and and good to go. As it's a kick straight into the abyssal you feed. Let's see how much damage this does. Gambling right out the gate. I like it. We do a lot of damage to the you feed. We do proc a counter attack. Y you know, this is going to be able to hold back a lot of her potential and have just having Alvira in the game, period. How did Alvira make it through? Just being an absolute threat to two characters. I mean, the you've been encountering, she's trying to Do you hear it? The engines are roaring. He's coming over to your house. Weird Al 2 is going with the bike. Yes. Oh, he's burning that diesel, bro. And whoa, do take out the Yuffie early and the defense break on the Arrowell. Not going to get the effectiveness buff. I mean, Arrowell needs to do everything she can to keep herself alive. Stuns. We need a fish with stuns. We get the barrier up. We do take the Hawaiian out and maybe Captain Lanny with the attack down. Watch him has secured his spot and he's going to hold it down for a while with just that. It seems like we're shaping up for our classic prof boy situation. One clear misclick on the band stage has led to a torrent of terrible consequences. This Arrowell not going to be standing for too much long with that defense break over her head, especially when the Queen of Misery is ready, is ready to let the cannons rip, and she's ready to, ready to let the salvo come out as well, putting down the Arrowell for good two salvos you hate to see it oh man we don't want to see this normally alona would be able to punish a landy so hard for hitting the salvo that much but in this case because you don't get a fighting spirit the Bologna's just sitting there watching she's looking cool she's looking pretty i mean she's a cool beauty all right but does she do enough to win the game and i'm leaning towards a no do we know if this emma Bologna is on um counter set or not um because if I'm not, it's, it's 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 free attacks in her for the whole time. She can't build up the bar. I, I mean, yeah, she she she's just going to get hit, and head. she needs to be able to take her own turns to just hit once, hit once, and even then you're being threatened by the Navy Captain Lanny. Huayang gets taken out here. That's the most he can do at this point, and I don't think the Last Rider crowd gets too much value, but 
just having a Leia here might be what watch him needs. So the Navy captain landing needs to be able to high roll. She needs to hit more counters. She needs to hit the salvo. And then I think Winter <laughs> might be looking, sitting pretty for the game. Sweet miracle does occur here. And now he's thinking about just burning this into the Navy captain landing. He might even get this game off of this. It might be a comeback situation. The guitar is going to decide everything. The number over the captain's head, is it enough to finish her off? Yes, it is. And it does, as always, grant the extra attack as well. Might have to be saying goodbye to uh, our crowd here as well in a couple seconds. Wow, last sort of crowd, usually not a bad matchup into Lone Crescent Bologna, but in this enough. case, I mean, so last sort of crowd's getting walked. He's not getting the AOE counterattacks, resetting his ultimate. And in this case, GG's to watch him picking off the Navy Captain Landy and getting himself that win. Top right I've, comes out from. I've uh, got to see. I absolutely, I absolutely did not see that coming. I thought with the Alvira in play, shutting down two of the key units on right side, it was an obvious walk for Winter Wish to take the initiative and go 2-0 in the set. But the table has been flipped, and it's him instead pressed up with his neck against the school locker, and it's the decision time to be made right now, right here, to fight back or to fall. I like so really thought others. this Navy Captain Landy would have enough tempo in her. Just hit attack, salvo, attack, salvo after, you know, attack after attack. The Leia with no healing surely would not sustain, but she kept herself in the game, takes out the Landy. Uh, he, the healing from that is going to be able to secure her that turn. And afterwards, I mean, that's all she wrote. This Leia unit, kind of good. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of the Laia unit, I wonder who's going to first pick Laia going into game four. Uh, oh, boy. Prebans does come out. Angel of Light as well as Conqueror Lilia. So now there really aren't anything in the game that checks Laia from being the opener. And now Winter with the first pick is just going to snatch her right up. I mean, that is the format you saw during E7WC. Whenever somebody finds a good draft, um, they are just going to be able to take these units again and again and again. And we're going to see a lot of runbacks. And now watch him. Picks up Arrowell as well as the Yufin. I mean, hey, do you have better ideas for how you want to tank down? Because I sure don't. <laughs> well, you know, Winter Wish in the position where he, where he is, you know, obviously seeing the effects of the lie, obviously not wanting it to go over to his opponent, quickly passing over saying Dubuchi and getting ready to take this key unit that puts him in the best position. Now, what responds well to that unit? As we've seen well and well over thousands of times tonight, it's the Urban Shadow Shoe, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm really starting to come to my opinion, uh, as I was saying earlier, where if you're going to bring the Urban Shadow Shoe, you can't just bring her and quit her. You can't just say that's the end of it. You have to bring units that benefit from the speed buff that can help her rip through the barriers and i think sharoon is both an excellent sure, choice of like both both of those on display right now with the bihu wrapping up winter wishes draft he, it's like he knows right is here really strong characters in this draft savior Auden clearly being a natural counter to both dark dps's that watch him is featured dark yeah dark very dark. I mean, we saw how much damage they put out. And on top of all of that, think about how hard they are to remove. When, when I see my opponent pick those units, I know there's dark times ahead for me. Very weak to the unbuffable both of these units can provide. Galilee is locked in last pick for Watchem. And ooh, B who's banned as as we predicted, but Instead of having Galilius ban, Winter Wish is going to go out on a limb, let the Galilius play the game, and ban out that Arrowell instead. Like Leia it. takes a first turn. I mean, Winter Wish needs to take everything he can. He's going to aggressively use this Leia S3. We are not going to get the full CR push coming out due to Abyssal Yuffie holding back all of this the are pushed through her passive last rider crow fight comes through vroom vroom i mean that's doing all the damage he can and ooh, triggers the counter attack and we put up the little barrier that is a really interesting aggressive use of last rider crow to play him aggressively is to play him defensively to play defense is a good offense yeah absolutely taking not only taking that initiative to protect himself but the Midnight God Lilius, once again, taking a heaping healthing of his health bar, deleting him almost immediately and getting him out of the game. Bukechi, as he says, for letting her dine on such a tasty meal. All that HP gone in just a second. Oh, and the dual attack comes out as well. That just laid down so much more damage on the Leia. There is no sustain for her. 
so taking any amount of damage is irrecoverable damage you hate to see a navy captain landy still quietly asleep over here even though her team is being pressed on she needs to wake up landy you need to wake up or else you're out of the tournament wake up wake up a joe biden wake up Oh man, enemy abyssal Yufin looking pretty there. Screams to the enemy team. Crocs a counterattack from the Aiden. However, Landy is still chilling. Uh, maybe this is not one of those times you should Don't be chilling this hard. Don't hit. Don't crit. Oh, I was about to say, if that hit there, that was the end of Winter Wish's dream. Another miss, but the damage still comes out. It's almost night night for Winter Wish already so early on into the set. But the Navy Captain Landy is here to do what she does. Stir this shit back on the open waters oh big turn here burns the s1 so we're getting that guaranteed salvo how many units and no we do not get a single kill we thought winner would be getting three Whoa. kills here however just so tanky on watch inside Sharu is going to steal the turn s3 comes out we miss we proc a counter takes oh, so, so, no salvo this time so diving with 51 hp wow so this is amazing oh hanging on by a single thread but where does the attack land we've got to get rid of the midnight gal lilius but that leaves open the rat to attack with her 368 does not matter because she's putting the hammer the anvil down with a massive rat gun. No crit. A counter attack instead. Will this finish her off? Do we get a Winner salvo? Will by the salvo? Yes. Oh, salvo keeps keeps him in there. And now, once again, we are staring down at attack buff. Speed up, Yufin. This Yufin is going to be looking at an upwards of seven eight hundred speed, something like that. When all things said and done, push. But a counter attack will finish her off. It's sure. Oh, Winter Wish hanging on at the end amazingly. Amazingly. If you thought that he was going to lose there, Winter Wish has one thing to say to you. Ni shao la. Ni shao la. I don't even know if Winter is Chinese. But I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying I, Every <laughs> single time this Yufin pops off, it is almost as if that is a game losing moment into Landy. It, it almost seems like it's better for this Yufin unit to not have to get to a point where she needs to, um, she needs to, she needs where she to needs trauma, to trauma, trauma to win up. the game. Yeah, it, it seems like she's better before they get to that point. Oh man. Okay. Wow. You know, once again, we are pushing into the game five territory. These matches have been so back and forth, and I'm ready to see how they play out. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this match started so they can start drafting because they got to concentrate on other things. I'm going to go flip a table for them. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Oh boy. I, I don't even know what's happening anymore. That, that was crazy. That was insane. That was wild. That was absolutely wild. Once again, we you know we come down to that last pre-ban. And oh, I mean, watch him knows what he's about. We go right back to the Yuffie games. Winter, which just needs to run this back. We are going to pick up the Leia again. And you know, is he going to... Do you pick up the shoe here? Do you do you let Watch him have the shoe? Doesn't go for it. So now Watch him. Surely he goes through the shoe again. That strategy has been working out so well for him, barring something like last game where, uh, whew, Navy Captain Lanny pop off is a Navy Captain Lanny pop off. Yeah. Once again, we're relying on the viewer's intelligence here, or at least I am. You know, I, I assume my ability to predict a match is about as well functioning as my ability to speak Chinese. So please let us know where you think once again in the round five of the set, who takes it all the way home? Does Winter Wish prevail and let a cold, a cold open frozen tundra blow his opponent and push them and push him down under sud and snow? Or does watch him finally strike back at the odd hours of 11 p.m. before the midnight hour and shine through with an illustrious strategy that brings him and the French in total to victory and freedom. He needs to pick up that shoe and instead of have, being able to pick up a knight this time with most of the good knights, the, the S tier knight knight out, picks up the Destina and now he's pairing it up with a Yulha. Oh, an interesting choice. Usually an extremely high value pick against, you know, high AOE damage like Last Rider Crow. However, he is looking down a Little Queen Charlotte as well as Hua Young. That is going to be some really extremely anti-tank 
technology he needs to be able to fight through. I'm really surprised to see the Hua Young coming out as much as she has. The LQC is a good favor as well, but what do I see on my screen? But our favorite girl, Destina, absolutely slowing down the match, providing us plenty of opportunities to catch up on things in our life that are important to us. The Yule Hall with the mitigation as well, but banned out, and the Navy Captain Landy as well to bring us to an open dream. This is the last match in the set. I hope everybody's ready for it to go 15 ways, 15 ways they did not expect. As the set is closing out, this is the last match of top eight. This is the last match between Winter Witch and Watchem. And this is the last match of tonight. So get hype and get ready. Two stacks of Proof of Valor almost immediately gone. An important source of mitigation for the rat who has to attack. Get that injury on crowd before we are gone. This is mission control to Captain Divine. Divine, do you copy? Yep. I have copy, read copy. Winter Wish's strategy. If you recall back to game match one and match Why three, he had this very interesting strategy where he was it. looking to take out Watchin's main mitigation first, and now I think he's found the key. Instead of fighting her in the match, he's going to fight her in the pre-band, taking her out right away. So he's already doing maximum amounts of damage to Watchim's units. And now he's going to be able to kick this Destina right out of the match. No sustain available for the side of Watchim. And now he's able to just go as aggressively as he can and take the match into his own hands with a more balanced team composition. I see where this is going. It just, it's just like a shark in open waters. You can hear her approaching solidly, second by second. That's right. And with the salvo comes out the barriers to protect her. The queen leading forward her peons to victory. The sword ever, ever rested in her hands. The wink for all the audience at home to know and believe. It goes through a crit, a hit, a complete extinction as well. Thanks to the buff. No more you fiend. No the more you. Ryder Crow is coming back as well. We know he took the turn early. All those counter attacks from the Yufin, the Salvos from the Landy. And now we're getting one more turn reset. Is this the last Ryder Crow game finisher? He's back all the way. Is his cooldown up? I do believe it is. Vroom, vroom. He's coming back again. And holy moly, what amount of damage are we getting? Barely hanging on. Watch him. His last two units, the last of his HP. We saw the French chefs cook today. And does he have more ingredients left in him? Landy goes, but will be able to hit the salvo. So no counterattack, no healing comes through. Huayam, soul burns, we take out the Landy and there is just a shoe left for the side of watch him. Oh God, I thought with the Destina, I thought with the Yulha coming out as mitigation, we were gonna see a slow burning draft in which we could all catch up with our families. But no, the action was as quick as can be. The Rat Gun, the final swan song for Watchem. The damage, not even enough to put down the LRK. All of those stacks of Proof of Valor are coming up. But I think with this sword coming down, that might just be the it. And with it that is. Little pop, watch him gets taken out. Winter takes match five. And with that, I do believe he will be advancing to the finals. Wait, no, he will be playing. Actually, that's what yep. we're doing next. We are we're doing playing next. the winners between Winter Wish and the last set, which I Cougar believe Bat. is Cougar Bat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Both, wow. Uh... We had such a tight set. I thought we had a full day already, but no, we're actually going into another set. Oh man, I'm okay. a little bit out of breath. I can only imagine how these players are feeling. I mean, if you look at the way Kukurbad played to a match five, Winter Wish played to a match five, these guys are fighting for their lives out here. While, uh, while our fighters are getting ready, I just wanted to thank again, Epic7 and Huawei for collaborating to bring us this exciting tournament and to give a special shout out to the app gallery and their special offer which is linked in the description or which is pinned in the chat you can tell i make content for youtube more than i stream so huawei's app gallery is a gaming platform that offers discounts through coupons special offers all kinds of different things that allow you to access discounts on your in-app purchases and i'm not talking about little piddly discounts or points here i'm talking about substantial 15, 20, 30, once I got a 42% discount. These discounts and promotions rotate, they change every month. And the great thing about it is it always saves you money. So it's definitely something you wanna try out. I use it every single time I make purchases. So if you like saving money, and I know you do, scan that QR code, click the link, 
pinned at the top of this. It'll be in the description of the video when we upload this VOD and start saving money, not just on Epic 7, but on all kinds of mobile games that you can enjoy thanks to Huawei. This Tristan guy is really not telling you the most compelling part about this. He, he didn't tell you guys he's 330 speed, did, did he? Yeah, he's 330 speed and with the gear that he got from the Leaf Packs, and the burning passion packs that he picked up from of all of these discounts. So if you want to be as fast as Tristan Wolf, Boobus hey, make swine. sure you go. I'm certainly not. I'm I'll getting faster what. and faster the longer this tourney goes along. Amazing. Oh boy. Well, Our fighters are ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm we, I believe ready. we are in the semifinals of the E7 Ab Gallery Challengers Cup 2024. And we are getting right into the last set of matches we'll be getting for today. The winner of this fight moves on to the finals. The loser of this fight moves on to the third place round, which will be held next week on Car 6's channel Saturday. Yeah, both players re-evaluating the set they just saw from their opponent, maybe adapting their strategies a little bit, especially adapting the pre-bans. And we already saw from how important these pre-bans can be. Leia knocked out as well as the Lua. Both players says we are not dealing with that Plague Doctor. And now we're looking at a situation where Natalon Monk might be able to take over a match. We get that first pick of Bissell Yufin all over again. And I wonder if Winter does commit onto something like that Monk. Winter, in Winter, as much as his namesake might hint at it, not wanting to see the doctor during flu season here. Nobody really wanted to see do a death dealer, Ray. Right? He's a med he's a licensed medical practitioner. I can't imagine why, but instead we'll be relying on the Pood special as well as maybe Captain Landy. Fair enough picks already, and I think uh, Zio for the first time today as well. Yeah, Kukurban needs to take a second to evaluate. Do I want to go aggressive here into the AOL, into the Navy Captain Landy? And he does. We slam lock in the Ran here. Ran Zeo is one of the most aggressive drafts you can play in the entire game. And now Winterwish needs to figure out how he's going to play this match from turn two. There is no way for him to be able to swing it into a turn one. No Natalon Monk available to him unless he gets clever with it. Ooh, Kukurbat goes for the Biblis pivot here. So he's not going to commit into a cleave, but instead go for something a little bit more geared towards just beating that Landy with the debuffs. And oh, is he going for one of these Bizarro hybrid drafts? We get a Summertime Iceria here. So he sequenced himself into a half cleave, half slow tank down playstyle with a bit of a debuff tech. I like this. I, I like where this is going. He's pulled out some very different drafts from what we've seen today. I haven't very seen a reverse Cesarea Cleave in years. I'm pretty excited to see if he pulls this off. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just a couple seconds away. The ban phase is all that stands in the way. Seems that Winterwish has found what he, he needs to get out as soon as possible, being the summertime as area. And Rowana, is this another Rowana first turn ban? Mm -hmm. We're on a ban okay. out for both players. I mean, with all the extra attack coming out from the Biblos and the counters for that Abyssal uh, Yufin, uh, that is just it. way too much value for any unit to be presenting over I to Winter Wish's right side. So we want to knock that out as soon as possible. Zeal sees us in first turn, Four. and we are going to look to fish Silence's Crimson Armin. That Crimson Armin is not do. going to be able to play the game unless yes. the Angel of Light cleanses that those debuffs. Mm -hmm. well, she's gonna have a lot to cleanse here in a couple seconds, especially if we get the burn, which we do, guaranteeing to ignore effect resistance. The symbol of unity also providing the extra hit chance and the damage as well. The skill nullifier protecting and the Biblis reacting to that counterattack and piling on even more debuffs. Ooh, so many debuffs. The Angel of Light can only cleanse one. Defense Breaks manages to stick on two of these units. And now Biblis gets her turn here, and she is going to be able to clear the skill nullifiers the Angel of Light put up. We're going to put up even more debuffs. Blinds goes over to all the characters, but it's going to proc another sprinkler from the Biblis. This Aiden counterattack isn't helping, and we reapply the defense break against the Angel of Light. Now everything on Winter Witch's side is defense broken. Kukurbat can just land huge attacks and get himself over to victory. Angel of Light dropping the S3. We are going to silence. We are going to unbuffable. But 
can that overcome the deficit that we are going to be facing when there are so many defense breaks on our side? Aiden takes the turn. We're going to drop as much damage we can on the Yuffie, almost knocking her out of the match and keeping her our team safe as a response. A silence joining in with this cavalry cade of debuffs as well. A little bit of healing coming out. A strong hit and a hit back with a miss. Oh god, I'm seeing activation after activation on both sides. Oh my goodness, this Yufin is keeping herself alive with these with this healing. She needs to be able to heal and she she's hanging on the the, the Navy Captain Landy won't do enough. And top right comes out from Winter. Kukurbad takes game one. Kukurbad takes game one. Now, I do got a highlight here. I put in the prediction with the channel points, and then I, I accidentally selected the wrong person. So um, I put all my money on Winter Wish. Um, I meant to say it's for <laughs> Kukurbad, but that's really, I saw him as the underdog going into this match a little bit. But I got to say, after that first round performance, that thought has been dashed immediately from my mind. Such a daring selection of units coming out, even favoring and, and getting a lot of praise out of the wolf back here. Interesting to see the selection and interesting to see the, 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 the more vivid strategies coming out earlier into the match when a lot of players settle in, pick their comfort picks as opposed to later on. So I just like to highlight one important fact about both sets we witnessed earlier today. The player who has lost game one won both sets. And now that Winter Witch has found himself in a position where he has lost game one once again, I wonder if it's going to play a factor into the mentality of both players going into the next set of drafts. Now that they know, okay, both of these guys are good in game five scenarios. Both of these guys are better when they lose game one. And I wonder if that gives Winter the edge that he needs to be able to take this at home because he, that last game did not look good for Navy Captain Landy at all. Biblis did so much work there and he needs any edge he can get to launch a comeback. I can agree with you there. There's a difference between fighting an opponent of equal, ski, of equal skill, of equal gear, of equal pedigree, and there's a difference between that and fighting a cornered rat who will fight back fight back and do whatever he can to avoid your Tims and your New York City bricks. That's the kind of danger that Kukurbat is facing down. I don't know if a French man is ready for a New York terror like that. Yeah, we'll have to see if Winter is going to be that New York terror going right into game two of the semifinals of the App Gallery EU Challengers Cup 2024. Whenever these guys are ready, we're going to be sending into it. And we are so ready for the matches we are getting today. Mm -hmm. What? Wait, what? oh, sorry. I was building Biblis. Let's get this going. <laughs> It was a nice, I forgot, so she went, she, so she did the S2, then she went, and then immediately got counterattack, which let her do another S2. I was like, holy shit. Value. That value was, was like, wipe value. away the defense break. Defense break reapplied. I was like, oh. Yeah, oh, you, you really need like a high amount of cleanse against Biblis, and, or you have to like just crowd control her. There was not a lot. Oh man. Velcan, we feel I, feel I feel innumerably sad for you, but summer is coming up again. Hopefully, you can snatch another Biblis. She was a summer unit, right? No, she, oh. she was a the Christmas unit. What? That was a Christmas event? Yeah. I completely forgot. I just thought, like, flowers and shit. I was like, oh, that seems like summer. Yeah, it was like her and Booby Lydica. Like, they were the, the, the Christmas units. I'll make you taste. D Divine is finally realizing this is what happens when you hit your late 20s. Time just feels like absolute nothing to you. You no longer have any concept of time. You are not no longer in control of anything and time is just going to slip by you. Welcome to your late 20s, Divine. I want to personally welcome you and I want to personally welcome Navy Captain Landy into the face of Biblis again. We saw that last match and we're seeing it once again. Winter Wish is playing one of these Elbrus compositions where you tank down, you hunker down, shield up, and you fight back with counterattacks. But Biblis just does so much work here. And this might be a tough scenario for her to survive in with the Angel of Light and even one more pick to Winter Wish's name. Yes, one more pick as I am as I realize that I'm going into this match a poor man. Points were ca where apparently the channel points were cashed out earlier than I thought, so um. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely desperate to see 
Winter Wish, pull it back, at least in the name and the spirit of my investment. And I'm certain that a knockwall goes a long way to helping that out. Knockwall is huge here. He's already got two DPS secured for himself. And the Natalong Monk will be able to just lock away all of the extra attack utilities Ooh, Biblis can offer unless it is on her own turn. However, with a Bologna ban, I'm assuming this Monk is out alongside the Zeo. I thought it had to be a Bologna ban. I imagine her getting so much value in this game, not only helped out by the dual attacks, but by these massive AoEs, but, and with the protection on her way as well, we'll have to see how far all of it goes to make the splash it needs to in the game. Stand at attention, Pledge of Allegiance. Conqueror Lily is demanding the attention, also getting those attack breaks out on the Bologna, keeping her at bay for a little bit. This is something people often forget and have to remember she's not only buffing up her team with some extra defense attack breaking the main I'll dps's i mean it's going to take a long time for you to chew through her soldiers in their march to victory and we are going to soul burn the redirected provoke onto the biblos making her not able to choose her own action for two whole turns that is going to hold massively hold back the ability no of this Biblis to just farm those counter attacks and get those defense break in. We saw last match how deadly those defense breaks are. And now, ooh, Shu Ghost puts up the speed buff, going to get taken out right away. Those buffs strip. However, we do miss the unbuffable against the Shu. So she is going to still be able to apply for that one more turn she's going to take. Alona now tempoing, and we are hitting back. However, one that procs a extra attack from the Bologna and two, that is going to proc sprinklers from Biblas. We do put up the skill nullifier in anticipation, but that is going to get knocked out right away and see how the defense break shakes up. Two of them are going to be a little bit scary when the AOL has no HP left on her on her I don't know, bank account. I'm like, I don't know if HP is what you find in bank accounts. If I found my HP in my bank account, I'd be even poorer than I currently am. But that's not that's something to say for a medical professional. Right now, we might need a medical professional on left side's team, but there's no soul weavers in sight as these de as these defense breaks pretty much spell death as about as well as you can. Winter, we thought he came up with a good draft, but now it's looking like he's in a pretty tight spot. I never thought I'd say this, but I've never seen somebody feel like they're in an iffy spot when their opponent has something to the number effect of 12 debuffs behind them. Now we're going to soul burn the landy, drop as much damage as we can, and Bologna once again bats back, takes out the Angel of Light here. However, the Yuffie is full fighting spirit. She's ready to go, and who? Does Kukabad have enough left in his tank to be able to handle this trauma pop off? Going for the takedown, getting a resistance and a counter attack as well. Definitely not what wanted, what anyone wanted to see there. As the Bologna steps up to the plate, this is important of turns. Yufin coming up. I don't know if there's much that can stop her at this rate. Unbuffable is huge on two units here, blocking them from being able to pick up the Vigor buff from the Malona kill, but she is going to drop this Conqueror Lilius right here, and now two of the units left. Most importantly, this Urban Shadow Shu is going to have that Vigor as well as the Bzzz. She needs to do a lot of work here, otherwise Yufin will make quick work of her team, and you know, thank you through his turn, Kukabat. Do you go for the Yuffie here? Surely you go for the Yuffie. She's she's coming up right next. And ooh, crit number comes through. Goes on the Yuffie counterattack. What is going on here? Played the animation. Bologna's going to bat back. Lots of damage comes through. Still hanging on. And she survives no. by the skin of her teeth. That counterattack was so unfortunate. Kukabat wanted the counterattack to come out. Now, after this, which obviously with a lower defense could have possibly killed, but now it's three pickings for the Ufine as she ramps up and gets to put down the sword. Massive attack and setting up the ship to come on. That was the last attack that Winter Wish needed for Landy to pop off in synchronicity with the Ufine. These are the last two characters you want to hit their win condition, and they're doing it one after another. A clear, decisive victory for Winter Wish. So, you know, the sets before this, we saw these players fight extremely aggressively for the Navy Captain Landy, for the Abyssal Yufin, and this is the case for why you do not ever let somebody have both of them, even with a Biblis on your side, you know, you, you have the defense break, you, you looked real good, you have the Bologna, but it just didn't work out for Cougar Bad. So, 
you know, we, we were talking about this. We were talking about how Winter, once he's one match behind, you know, does he launch a comeback? And we, we definitely see him get even here. Now, Cooker Bat with first pick for next game. What is his game plan? Because if things follow the pattern of how these matches played out today, um, I would say he's not favored, but he needs to find the drafts. He needs to be able to find the strategies to get himself in match three of this set. Let's get right into it. I'm ready. I, th I hope you're ready because these boys are certainly ready to play. I'm ready as I'll ever be, but I'm ready to be amazed and bedazzled by how these competitors heated up into this set of the match. Conqueror Lilius setting a lot of the tone going forward. Winter Wish has time to respond. As you said, both of these competitors equally, uh, equally uh, good at dealing with being on the off foot. Now we get to see Kukrabat turn this match up an extra notch to prove he still got it in him to shore up as our victor. Conqueror Lilius with the first pick. I mean, you, there's no safer support to pick in the game with even, especially with Zio out, but this time Winter identifying with Knockwell out that Yufin is one of, if not the strongest unit you can play in the entire game is going to pick that up. And how are we going to support this holiday? You see no lay in the game. We do not have to worry about that win condition. Well, the support's gonna have to come out here in a couple seconds. It is the Crimson Armin once again. We've seen a lot of the responses thus far to it. Obviously, um, some splash damage from the rat that we can expect to see. A Midnight Gala Lilius every now and then, but not, not too much immediate responses that take her out of the game on turn one. So Kukrabat opts to slow it down a little bit, get some mitigation of his own, and make sure that what happens la what happened last time doesn't repeat itself by taking the Navy Captain Landy. Don't want to be fighting off both of those threats in the future. Yeah, Winter, which will grab the Biblos for himself this time. I mean, with the amount of counter attacks coming through, surely she just keeps blinding, defense breaking, and buff stripping versus the Navy Captain Landy. That is going to be his game plan for this set. Looking at a fourth pick, do you go for a cleanser for the Conqueror Lilius? Do you go for maybe an anti-barrier? And no, we, we are going to go for a a hybrid opener counter opener here angel of light is going to be able to cleanse a, a one round of debuffs Maybe whenever she gets aoe'd and arch demon as well as that falconer clary picked up again for cooker bat side he is all he is playing right into the counter attack strategy here and he is not afraid of this biblis finally the flurry coming out one more time with the with the sorry, buff, what? She, she, it was the buff. It was the buff. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Who's that above her? Archdemon. I'll wrap things up. Who? Oh. You know, who, she who? lands seals. Who let Ace train her in this turn? I mean, both of these boys, <laughs> Cooker Bat and Ace Trainer, they run Remnant Violet reps. So uh, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised uh, at all. Not, if, uh, the, they they the did the old handshake. Yo, yo, your boy Ace Trader has sold his tech over to the French militia. Nah, that's the bro. new narrative. It, that's not even the worst, man. It, okay, when Ace Trader <laughs> first came up with that Archdemon draft, you have any idea how many Korean players picked up on that? Dude. Dude, Ace Trainer giving the Koreans the ADS tech was the one thing I will never forgive my boy for. I love him otherwise, but he gave the Koreans way too much power. He gave him way too much power. And so we go into the match. Ladies and gentlemen, say it with me now. Walk and talk. Stand at Allegiance. Pledge. Your queen is here. Your conqueror, I should say, is here. Ooh, lands two attack down. We failed the immunity strip against the crimson armin and we are going to s2 the biblis preventing her from getting that aoe attacks fishing for the extra chance to blind extra chance to defense break versus our navy captain landy draft and here we get one big s3 with the falconer clary do we go for a, a, a strip on the Malona or the Yufin, and we are going to go for it on the Yufin. Defense break does land. That is massive defense break landing means she does less damage as well, significantly less at that. It's also a darn shame because at the end of the day, that barrier is still stuck on, which is going to take a. Did you just see that? Is that a prophetic candlestick on the Conqueror Lilius? Is that a no, crown of glory that, on the Landy? I was about to say, that's a crown of glory on the Landy as well. Oh, it's no, not on Elbrus? No, it's on Crown of Glory. 
Cougar bats cooking. I can't believe I was. Let's, wait. No, that's no, that's, no, no. that's an Elvis. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So okay, that okay, means okay. it's on the air well, right? In the air well, yes. Yeah, it, it looked like it was on top of her. Okay. Uh, it, did. Like, it did. It did. It was up there. French chef cooked with exotic ingredients, but non Elbrus Landy is something else. Not something I would expect. And now Yuffie pops back with her own counter attack down. That is going to hinder the power of the Selvo a lot. And trading into a Bologna when you have attack down, that is such a bad look for the Landy. I'll make you taste despair. Away, oh man, just there, I was like, what? Wow, I was not expecting a non Elbrus light. Oh, Elbrus on the Yuffine goes once again, and that's what's so scary about the Yuffine. Even with a defense break, not going to be do doing a whole lot of damage there. Oh boy, Kukurbat attacked down on all of his main DPS. It is not a good look. Even though he feels like he should be in a stronger spot, Conqueror Lilias versus Zero Cleansers. It's looking a little bit rough. Looking more than a little bit rough, especially because we all know what's going up right here in a couple seconds. That's right, the protection from Crimson Armin, the one that sets their team on safe waters and protects from the incoming Badlands. Full team but you know what's even scarier is that Conqueror Lilius has her full cooldown ready and available thanks to that prophetic candlestick. And oh boy, you are going to land the blinds here. You are going to proc the counters. Defense break is going to come through sprinkler action, but can you handle another round of vigor buff from the Conqueror Lilius? Can you handle the attack down? Those are going to be so deadly. We talked about things getting massive value so far in this set, but I haven't seen anything get more value, honestly, than the artifact choices here, especially with another Crown of Glory proc. You know, the Airwell currently missing her escort buff, still doing a gosh darn great job at it currently because of this situation where she can protect the team through Crown of Glory. And, and like you said, like we're okay. getting so much value and this Yuffie, despite being defense broken, counter attacking turn after turn after turn. She is providing so much value, not only keeping herself alive with these counters and the healing, but also just chipping down Cougar Bat's HP total ever so slightly. Landy takes another turn here. No salvo. You want to see her pop up as much as possible. Bologna now finally getting to play the game. And oh boy, I still see one more defense broken sticking over to Cougar Bat's side. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately for uh, Winterwish, however, all these Crown of Glories have meant no Soul Burn here. The Soul Burn such a key aspect in getting a lot of this damage out. And while we're on that note of damage coming out, the trauma, the, repa the repressed memories, all the images she's seen on the internet flowing into Abyssal Yuffie's mind as she launches her, her attack, gets the counter attack, gets the response to the counter attack. Can we see one more? Yes, we can. A bit Biblis following up for good measure. However, that was. Just, uh, you know, we saw some really weak Yuffie pop-offs earlier today just because she was so low. She was alone when she was ready to pop. And now going to the name cam, we do land a crit. Takes her right out. And now Cougar Bat's left in a position with no DPS. GG being called right here. Winter Witch takes game three. Uh, say it with me once again, Valky, those debilitating debuffs putting us down and out. The chef unable to cook up much as he was stolen of everything he needed. All the beautiful spices, all the colors and flavors gone as it leads to him, as it leads to him being put down in a very bland, bland place. Ooh, and now, you know, funnily enough, a uh, Cougar Bat's being the one being put on a on the back foot here. He was in the lead. He had this game by the throw and now he needs to claw his way back, opting for first pick for game four. I wonder if he's going for the same Yuffie strategy, just take that away, or if he's going for something a little bit more Sheffin. I mean, Winner was... did have the advantage of fighting five versus three because that flurry was definitely working for him in that fight. What yeah, the, was the... the flurry was just procking those Elbruses left <laughs> and right. She was, she was. It was an amazing, amazing round of brutality, and I can't wait to see what happens next. I mean, the important part is despite, you know, the you okay, you can take away their fighting spirit, but number one, you'll still eat a counterattack. Do you survive the counterattack? And number two, do you get lucky enough that your opponent doesn't proc a counterattack like we just saw? Because if they proc a counterattack, guess what? Some of that fighting spirit is coming right back. And not only that, you also have to try to withstand the counter, the salvo, the Yuffie AOE counters. It's just such a ma rough matchup for Falconer Flurry to try to win. Well, our fighters are ready if you guys are. Should we roll it? Oh. 
Uh, I'm yeah, never ready, but that's because these matches are just far too exciting for me to handle. But I'll keep the action at the handle as we go into what could be the final match here if Winter Witch manages to prevail. Or will Kukurbat swing us all the way back to another end game final match five, best of five situation? Yep, send it in. Yep, go. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Here we go. Yep. Pilot time. Pilot yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. We're good, we're good. Mm -hmm. ASMR. All right, coming into game four now, Arch Demon. Wow, I never thought this is another unit that gets added to the pre bands. Arch Demon, <laughs> you can now uh, alongside the Angel of Light. So even that option is off the table now. Even more fast, fast opener type units being removed. We have a grand total of what one, two, three, four, five, six being removed from this match. And oh boy, oh, both of these players now the grabbing the Conqueror Lilius. I mean. You take out all of these OP fast yeah, units, you gotta have something. Conqueror Lilius going over for Cooker Bat again, and Winter Wish says, hey, this opening worked for me last match. I'm going for you theme plus Carmen again. I am an unmovable rock, and there is nothing you can do to shake me. What was the, what was the Winter Wish, like, copy pasta that was there at World Cup last year? What, do you, think this do you remember uh, it? <laughs> you, you're, are you trying to stir up that beast? I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, was it something like Winter Wish is um, blah, 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 something? Number one global player saved my family from a car wreck? I don't remember. I'm trying. Uh, it's not a good thing. Is it not? It's, my memory is, I'm actually failing to remember. I'll shut the hell up. It, it has to do like... with the type of character he likes. Moving on from all of that, <laughs> we've got the uh, the flurry on deck. The Ocean Breeze Lulica following in as well going to be driving us away from that so sort of conversation almost immediately. It's like my Uber driver who comes to pick me up whenever I'm with a drunk person. Um, getting us away out of dangerous waters and protecting a lot of the team. We've seen now two knights and a support, so I'm just going to get a little bit ready for this match to play out here, as you can see, um, before uh, hopefully another DPS option gets picked out. I mean, Winter, once again, looking for that slower tank down play style. He... He, he, he realizes that there's not enough fast units in the game left to fight back versus this. And once again, opts for that Crimson Armor plus double Elbrus action. And now he's got both DPSs locked in. He can just sit pretty and pick a hardcore um, counter utility unit for last pick. But having to look down this Alvira here, that makes things a little bit awkward for him. And a Solitaria saying, get that fighting spirit out of here. Get that focus out of here. None of that, none of that nonsense. And the Dragon King, Queen, what is her name again? Dragon King Sharoon. Is it Dragon King Sharoon? Okay, Dragon, Dragon King, King Sharoon. Sharoon. Oh, okay, Dragon King Sharoon coming out towards the end, saying goodbye yeah. to the Alphira. In Asian languages, uh, the, the word king is is not like gendered, so it's just the the, the in Asian languages, oh, king is just that. like any type of monarch. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, like a king is just a king. Um, if if you're talking about like deeper titles, um, then it starts to go down, break down into genders. But uh, for a lot of people that get confused, why it's not Dragon Queen Sharoon? It's just because Asian kings don't have aren't. It's not a gendered word. I literally hadn't even thought of it until that moment right there. Yeah, you know how um a lot of like uh, Western languages like Spanish and French have like gendered conjugations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so English doesn't have that, and Asian languages have even less of that. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, welcome to a Valk stream. This is a math guy stream. He not only teaches you math, but culture. And speaking of math, this Yufin is out not only for one turn, but for two turns. Even though that stun icon says one atop her head, uh, she is at the bottom of the combat readiness bar, needing to take two full turns before she can play the video game again. And uh, we're all hoping, God willing, she never gets to. Missing the defense break as well. Oh, not a good day for Clurry, but we're going to have to attack. We've chosen our target as well, and I don't think there's much turning back we can do. She's going to be t eating a bunch of hailstorms. Hopefully the fairy tale for a nightmare can spread around some good damage. I'm telling you, you know, Bats Flurry put Clurry. money on winter. <laughs> for as much as, you know, the, the, the Falcon of Clurry has not been looking good into the Abyssal Yuffie today, at least she could hit her now. Take away some of that fighting spirit. See? No counterattacks. Look, wow, stun, OP debuff. Look at that, guys. I think, I, think it, 
I'm now realizing it kind of sucks because she takes away Fighting Spirit, but then gives her Fighting Spirit for hitting her. And I'm like, gosh darn, that actually sucks. Yeah, that yeah. actually sucks. No wonder. I, I don't even like calling myself this because I barely do math. I'm really lazy. But if you just do the math, she doesn't even take 40 Fighting Spirit away. She takes away 20 because she takes 40 and yeah, yeah. 20 back. And then if, if the Yuffie counters, it's, it's like it, you don't take anything away and then you have to eat the counter damage. It gets rough out here for the Falconer Clurry players. It gets rough out here for a Falconer Clurry player. But the very, ooh, you know what? If she had attacked there, it would have been neutral. It would have just been zero game. No. <laughs> Look at that. Takes it all away. Boom. Right back to 20. Right back to 20. Of uh, The rat gun is enabled and ready to rip, roar, and go. A counter attack, unfortunately, comes through as well. A, a, attack down, very important. They're not going to be able to stop a whole lot of damage versus the shoot, but at this point, look how behind your team is. Look how asleep that Landy is. You're going to need to take exactly what you you get. And now, like you said, the squad assembles. Blast comes through. How much damage is this going to be? We drop 3k off of the Yuffie, and the extra tick almost sends her home onto the farm. It's just in a very dangerous situation, as we said before. Really would love to not see her. Dual attack here for no reason. That's with a, a Salvo follow-up. Yeah, and on top of the Salvo, we know this Falcon of Chloe is on a Aureus build. She is absorbing damage for the entire team, but how long can you do that before she is going to fall? Conqueror Lilius on that candlestick build. We eat so and many counters. And attention. Salvos. It's right back, and I guess I me and Cougar Bat's cooking. We're getting all of these buffs, synergies back, and this is the exact amount of things that's keeping Cougar Bat in the game. His tournament hopes are on the line. He needs to stay in this. He needs to get this win and force a game five in order to extend the his run. Get the redirected provoke, but resist the pushback. Oh, golly gee. Just a moment. I'll be right with you. We're, we're, oh. we're gonna need to send up some prayers. Oh, man. How much combat readiness does Yuffie need to do her S3? Does she need 100? Combat readiness or fighting spear? I mean, I mean, fighting spear, fighting spear, sorry. It needs to be a full bar. She's ready to do bar. it, like, right now. Yeah, I know, I know. I was, I was wondering if, if the flurry play, maybe, but even then. I mean, the speed buff is here, enabling us to go first. We get the burn here, so we'll be taking two turns. Hopefully a knockback on these key targets. That's right. Yep, no. all, oh my god, it misses the stun, but it procs a counter. <laughs> Holy moly, this Yuffie is keeping herself in the game. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I cannot believe how much... It is just going back. Finally, a stun that won't do anything. No, the stun is huge here because that disables her counter attacks, allowing you to all in this Yuffie without punishment now. Another attack goes through. We're at maximum injury. Guardian Ice Crystals can only keep her alive for so long with the damage. And now Falconer Clurry is going to be able to chip her down. And if you now can ignore her... Oh, no, we are not ignoring her. We are all inning this. Oh, the Urban Shadow Shoes doing her best. She can't counterattack. Hits once again. Now we provoke the counterattack. The Elvis Ritual Sword from the Navy Cats and Landy. Attack down. Not going to be able to do the most for Winter. Oh I feel God. like I am breathing a deep sigh of relief. That was down to the wire. Winter Wish recognizing it, giving it back over to Cougar Bat. But we were so close there. And one more thing I wanted to really highlight there. We had just seen the Rad S3, but we were already almost up to another one. Very much that speed buff, very much the constant CR pushes, and everything else taking to effect there was a very dangerous situation. But Kukrabat made it through, and he's ready to give us our third. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, our third round five final set, final match, everybody. This is it, guys. This is the fight. This is the one that decides it all. The winner of this fight goes on to the finals. The loser of this fight goes on to the third place match next week on Car Stream. Let's start it up. See who takes it home. Send it. Send it, my guy. Now, we've come a long way, as I have to keep highlighting every single time we get into one of these matches. I'm going to rip rare through these pre-bands, just so everyone's caught up. No Laia, favorite opener gone. No DDR, we don't want to see him at any time. No Lua, still unfamiliar with that unit. No Summertime Asaria. No Rowana. 
No Zio as a perfect opener, which allows the Rand to come here real quick. The Rowana, I mean, I mean, the Knockwall still banned out, leading to a perfect situation for this you find here. The uh, Ace Trainer's favorite unit, Archdemon uh, Mercedes, is also out. So none of that kind of counteraction, none of that nonsense coming through. AOL banned for Poods and Winter Wish to cry about in the corner. Elvira also banned out to stop some, uh, uh, to stop the stopping of some of these increases of, of these additional bars. And finally, Dragon King Sharoon. So it means a lot of these stuns, a lot of these a lot of these anti-turn mechanisms such as sleep are all fair game. That is the context we're playing this last match in. I mean, those are a lot of pre-bans, but if you look at the real important facts of the game, no Knockwald, no Alvira, Abyssal Yuffie is the best game in the unit by far, and it's not even close, but we are going to get a Jacko draft from Cougar Bat. So that Yuffie will not be playing in a slower tank down draft like we saw in the matches before. She is going to be a cleave anchor for this Rand, this Jacko, and we do have that Requiem Roana as the last pick coming in here. Ooh, Winter Wish going to pick up that Navy Captain Landing. We need an Elbrus counter. We need a Bruisers in order to fight back versus this, and we need him now. We need one more DPS for our side. What does Winter Wish go Martial for? Martial Artist can! <laughs> An excellent, I think, last pick in this situation. Do you agree? Um. Uh, never mind. I, I didn't say. I think it's a bit anything. iffy into the Requiem Roana, but otherwise, uh, you know. Ken will have to do, is how yeah. I would describe this. I mean, Ken that's, will that's, have to do. That's the kind of attitude I think he shines in. When your back is against the wall, Ken will have to do. And he's the kind of guy who performs, as well as the Biblis, making much more of an appearance, especially on the second day, that I would have thought. She really is coming in clutch, but I can't say no to those defense breaks, those constant counterattacks, those constant strips. We've seen buffs play an important role, and two of our most important buff providers, Ran and Lilius, won't be making it to the end game of this match. So we'll have to see how it unfolds. This is the last match today. This is the last match between Winter Wish and Cougar Bad, and this is the last time I'm gonna say it, ladies and gentlemen. Get freaking hype for what's about to help happen right behind you. Let's go. We, are, we have built up the entire day up to this, opening the turn Biblis, both players banning the fastest unit from each other. We are seeing some aggressive actions come through. Biblis going to drop that chandelier on the entire enemy team, lands two blinds and a silence. Not the most you like to see, but provokes a counterattack. We are going to also sprinkler them one defense break is this going to be enough we got a requiem roana in the back this is also bad what was hooked up with chain of chiron going to land a lot more divas coming through we dropped that big s3 a lot of effectiveness in here pushing back the entirety of winter wishes team three blinds now and a restrict for the luluka now this is going to be a weird 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 spot for Coop, for winter wish who does he go for? We're going for the kill on the Crimson Arm and defense break. This is a guaranteed hit. Do we also proc a counter from the Ken? Yes, we do two counters. Two counters as well. An Ooh. increase in the combat rating is twice for the Biblis. She's almost pushed herself back up into a position to do something about it, but the team's got to hold on in the meantime. Speaking of which, the Jackal holds on to just a little bit of HP. Two counters even again. more counters again. And that bar is getting filled on the Landy for procs of Lures of the Sea, and that'll be coming through pretty soon unless there's something Kukerbat can do. Resistance. And resistance on the Landy. We soul burn to guarantee the silence so she can't have a turn one pop off. But the Landy says no. She says, I will win. Oh my God. And she goes counter attack again the moment she gets her turn. This is not looking good for Cougar Bat unless he can mount a Yuffie comeback. The sprinkler comes out. We need these defense breaks. We need to be able to defense break on both bruisers. Okay, Cougar Bat has maybe a shot in this Yuffie goes, crits both targets, gets counter attacked by the Ken and gets chomped down for half her HP. And now Lulika finally gets to play the game. There's one more chance here to uh, to try to get the silence on this Landy before the ship comes home. It's another burn, but it does result in another counterattack. And those are all five procs of the sea with the follow-up, which enables the Ufine to have her max bar now. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is going on? The Requiem Roana catches up a turn. 
I, I can't, I honestly cannot tell who's going to win. I want to say Kukerback is, is favored here with the Abyssal Yuffie coming here. Three defense breaks on the uh, uh, on the side of Winterwish. If he lands all three of those hits, it might be huge. Another chandelier drop coming in here. And oh, Croc, so many counter attacks. Is this another sprinkler action? It is. There's so many defense breaks going into Winterwish's side. The extra chit damage matters as well. The barrier, the healing, everything is coming together for Kukerback. It's lining up for him, hitting the the Ocean Breeze Luluka, taking her out through the defense break. Trauma comes through. AOE attack damage. We're going into both bruisers. We do not care. All of this damage is coming down. We missed the crit on the landing. We killed the cannon. The landing is a one HP. The repressed memories of the French battler comes through. The trauma deals the damage. Kukerbat slashes through with the Abyssal Euphine and makes a clean escape to come away with the win. Kukerbat ultimately taking it all the way back through this set and making sure you know his name. GG's come out. A crazy, turbulent back and forth 40 minute set between the both of them. Our third God Forsaken match going to the fifth game in a row. This is hype. This is the tournament we've put up per prepared and we'll be seeing you next week with grand finals showdowning with these amazing <laughs> players. What it an amazing so day. For Cougar, Matt, but he was able to pull it out. And with that, pull he secures out. himself that final spot versus, I do believe it was, uh, who was it that won yesterday? I think he will be going to the final. So look that up real quick. Man, I was <laughs> so hyped. I got so hyped, I, I forgot I said, my lines. I'm so I was about, sorry. I was about to say, I was leading it to you because I, I was like, it's Cougar Bat versus... Oh, yesterday yeah, I, it was Biru. It was, it was Biru. Mind, Biru so won yesterday. Blasting. Yeah, oh, he Biru, will be going Biru. up against Biru next week on Cards Channel. Uh, same time next Saturday or Sunday if you're in uh, EU and Asia. Um, and we will be going over the third place match between Winterwish as well uh, versus XLR. Oh man, I mean, even with that, these players have a lot to play for in these games. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen. I've always got to say it. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our sponsors, both Smilegate and Huawei. You can check it out on the App Store in the pinned comment, as well as the one Tristan is posting into the chat right now. But I just want to take a moment to say thank you for having me on. Tristan, you're always a great friend as always. <laughs> thank you for giving me another opportunity to cast up here with Valky. We do it all the time, but it's always been and always will be a pleasure. We'll be doing this again very soon, and I'll be, I'll be excited to see all of you next week when i finally after like a full fucking year get a chance to <laughs> commentate with car on That's an right. official cast for something i think this is the first time but thank you everyone for being here you have a lot your support means more than you'll ever know no and thank you guys both for being here i you know. I, I know you had a lot to do today and i know this was a tight squeeze i really appreciate you guys showing up for this and making it one hell of a tournament Hey, same here, same here. It's always fun casting with you, Divine. And, you know, for me, uh, since you already thanked everybody um, everybody on one side, I'll go with the other side. I want to thank the players for bringing us such excellent matches. I, I think it's been a while since we've seen something this hype. All three sets going to Game 5 today. And I want to thank everybody in chat for joining us. It's been such a fun time. I hope you enjoy your time next week with our boy, Car6. Uh, that is going to be it from us today. Um... Tristan, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I use the line? You can use the line. Wolfpack out. Oh, woo! Oh! <laughs> Catch you guys next time. I'm going to sleep. <laughs>